today the incredible story of Charles Rue. This is a guy who escaped by himself from North Korea twice. Now, this was a show I thought would take an hour, ended up going for three hours, which is why it's a two-part episode on the podcast feed. Those of you who don't know much about North Korea, this is a place where you can get sent to a labor camp for folding a newspaper incorrectly or for watching a movie that wasn't made literally by the government. Charles is a great storyteller. And what strikes me here is how he stayed strong through this whole ordeal, didn't give in to resentment, nor did he give up in a situation that would have given pretty much anyone a license to do so. The story of Charles' escape is absolutely incredible. There's so much in here that's both shocking, inspiring, and emotional. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. So enjoy this episode. Here we go with Charles Rue, defector from North Korea. Did you know who Shaq was when you were in North Korea? I I didn't know who Shaq was when I was in North Korea, but I knew who was James Bond. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How, how did you know who James Bond so, was? So um I when I was in North Korea, I was like a huge fan of like Hollywood films, you know, like 007, like action movies. You know, actually I watched um Will Smith like the uh, Bad Boys One when I was in North Korea. Really? Is that popular in North Korea, Bad Boys? It is super popular, like, among, like, you know, uh, millennials, you know, among this uh, fellow North Koreans, uh, friends that I had. Yeah, it's really popular. Wait, yeah. so among young people yeah. in North Korea yeah. who managed to get their hands on Western movies, yeah. Bad Boys is a very popular Yeah, option. Bad Boys is really popular. 007 is really popular. Um, and I remember one scene that this guy has, like, a cello, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't remember what episode is it. But this guy is a cello, and inside the cello, he does like like a gun, you know, and he pulls it out, he shoots it, and then he's riding a cello, the case, on a snow. I don't remember what episode is that, but... I don't remember that. One I don't either, remember but... that at all. That sounds like a combination between James Bond and El Mariachi, but I, I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? I just thought that was a funny way to sort of kick off the show. Yeah. It's like, And you just became an American citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just did. Like became like citizen like a couple of days ago. Wow. I got my like a certificate, you know, and it feels great. You know, like now I'm a fellow American, you know, citizen. <laughs> That's crazy. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. first of all. Thank you. Does it do you feel different being a North Korean coming from North Korea, being in America, being an American citizen, does it feel different? I mean like I've been, you know, I've been hiding, right? I've been hiding for the rest of my life, uh, before I came to the United States. I mean like you know, I was living under the shadow you know, for a while. So, um, having like my own identity, you know, as like, def as defined, as like, defined as something, you know, like, oh, he's like, oh, he's American, you know. I mean, like, he's North Korean. I mean, like, you know, I really wanted to have that privilege, you know. But um, now I got my citizenship finally. Like, I feel like a lot like responsible, you know, in a way, because like now I gotta pay tax. I mean, like, I I was now you can che cheat and avoid taxes like every other American. You can't now. You have to. You can't just slide by. Right. You've got to figure out creative ways. To yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta vote, right? I can choose. You know who I wanna. Oh, get. you can vote. Yeah, I thought I you said vote. you got a boat, and I was like, I "Do you get Dang. a boat?" Skipping a couple levels. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> straight, it's just straight, straight start from the bottom. It's just like you know. from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> no, <we're> yeah. <laughs> right. Turn on a hundred like real quick. <laughs> like that. But now you get to vote. You actually have yeah, to I get say. To vote, right. Well, to understand what that means, I think we have to go back. A yeah. little bit to understand and i know that you probably have been doing a lot of interviews you've talked about your story a lot yeah um i know it must be crazy and maybe sometimes difficult to talk about it but i think a lot of people are very curious and you found two people who happen to be especially curious about you and your yeah. story so yeah. if you're open to it we'd love to hear how you got here yeah yeah i mean uh first of all thank you so much for having me here today sure. and um yeah. thank you so much for coffee and uh and in and out yeah, yeah in he, and out we, yeah we stopped by in and out on the way here because yeah. i heard that he loved in and yeah i was I like did. i could do with something right now <laughs> such a good way to kick off an interview. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was really good and uh thank you so much for this opportunity to share my story with, yeah you know many more people it's well, like one of my... The hardest part, Gabriel, before we got here was we had this, you know, we're in LA traffic for like 90 minutes mm -hmm. getting him from right, sure. where he lives. So we're like, 
I just have so many questions, but I don't want to ask them in the car because I want to save them for the show. So, and yeah. Jen's like, so what's your favorite American? I'm like, no. Nope. So the whole conversation, I'm just like, so you uh, use Instagram? Just any, like what what dumb question that I don't want on the show. It's totally inconsequential. Can I ask? So the, all of the conversation before was like, so uh, you, so you like Starbucks you coffee? Like, you like yeah. books and yeah. Yeah. It's coffee. Or, yeah. Yeah. It was just like <laughs> nice day, huh? Yeah, just terrible small talk. The whole well, now time. we got hot weather. We got here. Mm-hmm. You know? like, Why aren't these guys asking me such boring questions? <laughs> yeah. Do they not understand how interesting I am? It's gonna be the worst interview ever. Now we get to talk about the good <laughs> stuff. Yep. The now we're finally getting to good stuff. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in a, a city called Hamgyeongnam-do. Uh, it's a province called Hamgyeongnam-do and a city called Changjin-gun. I've been there. So. Jordan, have you? I've been there. Have you been there, Jordan? I have not okay. been there. We went there. It's in the northeast, right? Northeast. Are you Am thinking of Hamhung? You said Chongjin, right? Chongjin, no. Changjin. Oh, so that, okay. totally but, different. Totally though. different. Changjin is like, or I've been there too. I'm going to I'm gonna get into it. Okay, sure. I'm let me stop interrupting you yeah. and just let you tell <laughs> your story. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about this other city, like that super Chongjin. industrial. Yeah, yeah Chongjin. Chongjin, it's like really, you know, it's developed, you know, it's like, I think it's like fourth biggest like a uh, city, city in North Korea. But your hometown is very different. Yeah, my hometown is like really small hometown. Can you tell us about it? Paint yeah, us a picture. Of course. Okay. So, um, I mean, I was born in North Korea on October 1st, 1994, under Chinese father and a North Korean mother. Wait, I'm already kidding. How did that happen? Where yeah, did the right. Chinese guy come yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. Chin- I mean, from China. <laughs> more, more explicitly, yeah. how? So, uh, my grandfather was a Chinese soldier. Okay. So, b- like, between, like, North and South, like, when there was a war. Yeah. Right? So, my grandfather came out to North Korea to fight off, like, I guess, Americans. And then he never returned to China after the wall. Uh, and so he came for the what we call the Korean War. Korean War came so, for right. the war, stayed for the yeah. stayed for the women. Yeah, yeah. No. For the women, right? <laughs> the rest of that phrase, right? I mean, <laughs> so he came in nineteen what forty nine, fifty, fifty one. I have no Something idea. Like okay, but one thing that I'm sure was like my grandfather didn't speak any Korean, my grandmother didn't speak any Chinese. But somehow they managed to, you know, live, you know. And I know how that works. I mean, right. Right, Jen? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and then my grandfather stayed after the war. Um, and then like Kim Il Sung gave out like special privilege to privilege to um Chinese soldiers, whoever that left, um, uh, whoever that didn't leave to China, and like saying, okay, so once you are gonna be here, we're gonna give you like you know, we're going to give you everything, right? Mm-hmm. Pri- privileged to, like, stay here or whenever you want to go back, just you can just leave, right? As a, as a reward for fighting. Right, okay. right, right. right. Um, and then my grandfather stayed, and, and then he had my father. And then my father was a Chinese. He wasn't a Chinese at first, right? So he was um, North Korean until he turned, like, 30 or something. I think he's, like, yeah, 30 or something, and then he got his, uh, he got his passport much later. And then... um. At the time when my father met my mother, he already had family. He had um, in China or no, in sorry, North Korea. In North Korea. yeah, in North Korea. He yeah, he uh, he had a passport at the time when he met my mother. Uh, but uh, when he met my he met my uh, he met my mother, he was already married. He had a four kids. Oh wow! Yeah, and then uh, basically I was just like uh, born out of wedlock. Got it. Yeah. And then uh, when I turned five, like my father abandoned me and my mom, and he left to China, bringing all his kids except me. Oh man! Um, Were you aware of everything that was going on back then? I had no idea. You just knew that he left. Yeah, I okay. just knew that, like, oh, he's gonna return someday, okay. right? And then when I was like seven, I remember my mom telling me, like, okay, you don't tell anybody who is your who's your like your daddy's Chinese, right? If anybody asks, tell them um, your dad passed away with a car accident. Okay. In the car accident. I was like, okay. I'm like, I'm a kid. I don't did, know anything. Did you have a car? We didn't have any cars, but like this car accident, you know? like Because sure. like North Korea, like you rarely find cars. You know? So it seems like a bad excuse if there's not that many cars. <laughs> yeah, right. How many but car I guess, I guess you say that and people don't ask questions. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but what was the idea behind that? Why did she want you to lie? Because like she didn't want it. People asking questions, right? About it's like b- because she wanted people to think you were full Korean. Uh, I don't think that is the reason, but um, like a lot of people would ask my because like the reason behind it is that my father 
borrowed like a bunch of money from our neighbors using our name and he bought um an opium in North Korea. And during 1998... I'm sorry, can I just clarify? Yeah. Your father, yeah. Bar- who had another family, yeah. but was staying with you guys part-time, yeah. borrowed a lot of money from neighbors yeah. to buy opium yeah. to then sell it? or to, Yeah, so I, I was going to get it. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure I was yeah, like yeah, on, yeah. Just on in case this wasn't crazy enough. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> I thought we were going to get into like the, the huge drama, but there's like... There's Juicy sub backstory, drama. yeah. Yeah, okay. there's a lot of backstory because, like, my story is like really complicated. <laughs> so, without knowing any context behind it, like, it's like wait, what? what no, this is yeah. great. I just we're totally listening. Well, yeah, and this we're totally is interesting. Even more interesting than I thought because I was like, okay, t- traditional North Korean escapee. Right. Dot dot dot. Wait a minute. There's there's all <laughs> this drug other stuff going on. So yeah. You, um, okay. So go ahead. Your father borrowed the money to buy. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, at the time, like my father was living with my family, like he divorced his wife because of my mom and they're still living together. Um, and then when I was five, he borrowed like a bunch of money from the neighbors using our name and he bought opium. And then so his idea was, OK, so opium in North Korea is really cheap because we grow them. Right. But in China, it's illegal, but expensive because nobody has it. So the idea behind it was like borrowing money you know from the neighbors idea behind it is like okay i can buy i can just do this once if it's if i sell it in china make money it's gonna be rich you know pay, it's gonna pay be, the neighbors pay, back yeah and then, yeah pay the neighbors right. back you know and then like you know i'll do something so he went to china and he promised us like my mom told me before she died like oh yeah my like we'll, like my father was like oh i'll be back in within like six months and then he left after six months. We didn't hear anything back from my father. And then uh, and then that collectors started to come to our house. Oh, man. Yeah. And then like bidding the like bidding the crap out of my mom. Oh, so this is like black market. Yeah. Black market. This like, is a big deal. Yeah. It's Loan really sharks. big. Deal. Who, yeah, it's who, like, what is a North Korean drug? I mean, um, debt collector like who is that? Mafia? Uh, like a mafia guy kind of. No, it's not mafia guys. It's just a neighbor's. You know, neighbors, like, debt collectors means, like, like, neighbors, like, husband, right? They're, like, uh, wife, husbands, you know, like, husbands always come, right? So, it's the people he borrowed money from, yeah, basically. People, yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, they came to our house, you know, they started taking our things, you know, such as, like, dishes, you know, clothing and, like, pots, you know, uh, like, a cooking pots, rice pots. And at the end, like, they took our house. They just kicked you guys out of Yeah, like, get the hell out of here, you know? And then we lost everything. And then we went to my grandmother's house when I was seven. And that's when my mom told me, so if anybody asks, tell them your dad has died in the car accident. Yeah. Simplify the backstory. Yeah. Make it simple and sort of starting over. Yeah. Yeah. Starting over. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I grew up, you know, I, I seriously like grew up like without, like, I have no memories of my dad, you know, because I was such a young you know, five years old, I don't remember anything about my father. And, like, because over the time, like, I must keep hearing my dad is dead, you know, mm-hmm. like, he's, I barely heard of him. But, uh, yeah, and then I was living with my grandmother from age seven to 11. And my mom is always traveling around the world, around the country to find my dad because, like, he's out there somewhere, you know, I know it. Mm-hmm. Was your grandmother in the same city? Yeah, same city as my father. So you, yeah. within the same city, you moved to your grandmother's house, but mm-hmm. your mom started going around the country? Mm-hmm. Is that doable? Can people move around the country just to look for somebody? Actually, you can't do that because you have to have like a document. Like a special to, pass? Yeah, special pass. Mm-hmm. But during like early 2000s, that was kind of easier because a lot of people, like that was like after Great Famine. Uh, approximately 300,000 to 1 million people were starved to death in North Korea. Uh, but during that time, like, the traveling is kind of, like, a lot easier than nowadays. Interesting. Yeah, okay. nowadays, like, you have to have a travel document, you know, but I'm not saying that it was, like, like really easy. You can just get on a train. It's not like that, but you still have to get, like, travel documents, you know, like, passport. Not, not a passport, but, like, a... Like, like a, a visa or yeah, something. Yeah, visa, yeah. right? To move around, so you need documents to move around, but it right. was easier back then. Because, yeah, easier back then to get. Because yeah. a million people around, million people starved to death. Right. So the people who were enforcing movement yeah, were right. busy with other things. Right, 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 exactly. Wow, right. okay. So she's off. Yeah, she's off. Okay. I don't know where she's at. 
And then I'm, you know, going to school in North Korea when I, I only enrolled in um in um elementary school when I was like eight. And I remember going to school with like um different pair of shoes, you know, one side on a winter winter shoes, one side on a summer like um like a rain boots. <laughs> Wait, so you had one different shoe on each foot? Yeah, because I was I was so poor. You yeah. know, I got like nothing. Um <laughs> Yeah, um, and then I'm going to school. I'm learning about Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il's history, you know, like math, like North Korean language and arts, music, you know, like PE, you know. And then my mom comes back when I was nine years old. So she's been gone for two years. Yeah, she's been gone for two years, but she comes back completely, like vegetable, like veggie, you know, like um, she's like paralyzed. Oh, she can't walk or anything? She can't walk. I mean, she could walk, right? But she was barely alive. Why? I don't I don't know. Because, like, she has been starving, stressed, you know, and... Just, She's a different person. Yeah, she was a completely different person. And then uh, she had a heart trouble. Mm. So she couldn't breathe that well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she comes back when I was nine, and then... Do you she, remember that day? I do. I do. What, I, uh, what I went was that like? You know, I went to school, and I came back, and I saw... Um, a pair of shoes that was ladies and my grandmother has like you know some shoes too but like it's not that you know fancy looking but i saw fancy looking shoes in the in the doormat and i was like oh like i wonder if it's my mom mm -hmm. you know and then i step in the door and my, my my mom is lying down on the on the ground you know almost like like dying and I couldn't talk to her um, because she couldn't speak or hear or see. She was like, completely like paralyzed. Oh, wow. Wow. And then, yeah, and then we had to move her to hospital. So, so we went to hospital, but in North Korea, like hospital and everything is like, um, it's free, right? That's how the, the like communist government yeah, runs. Yeah, government yeah. runs, right? Because it's right. Like socialism. But it's just like, it's the outside, you know, it's the, it's people, I mean, like, like the method, right? The function itself is like free, but like actually when you wanted to get it, it's, you have to pay for everything. So you kind of have to bribe people to give you things that you need. Is that what you mean? Yeah. You have to kind of bribe out, you know, like bribe in, you know, and um, you have to buy on your medication and bring it to the hospital so that oh. the doctors can inject them because like oh, North Korea wow. is so poor, you know, they don't have any medical they don't really have good medical, like, you know. Hmm. Care. Yeah, medical So it's care. not really free. It's not really free. Yeah, you have to pay. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah, so, uh, you know, my, my grandparents, huh. so uh, my grand, my mother's side grandparents, they were really, really rich. So uh, they used to be a famous, my, my grandfather was a magician. A magician? Yeah. Really? Not magic magician, oh, music musician. Musician. Yeah, musician. Oh, I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, wow. The story <laughs> just gets better and better. But musician's also pretty yeah, weird. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he used to play really famous band in North Korea in Pyongyang for um for the government, right? He played yeah. for the government. Yeah, for the government. That's actually a really privileged position, right? Yeah, and we. My mom was actually born in Pyongyang. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then my entire family lived in Pyongyang, like, like, yeah. So like. Governments provides like everything for them. Mm -hmm. That must mean that your mom's family was connected. Connect well connected to the with government. government. Yeah, and then my grandmother. I think like maybe you know. I think like the way that I can speak English so well. I mean like catch like something really well is because I think I got like my grandmother's brain because mm -hmm. she spoke three languages. So she spoke Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's a trilingual. Um, um, I think she spoke Russian too, but I can't remember. Interesting. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So my grandmother has some money and we used all on to saving my mom, right? And then about a year, she was doing much better. She could walk, she could talk, she could eat. And then uh, she could like talk to me, you know, like, oh, I missed you, you know, and like, uh -huh. she's like crying, you know, every, yeah. And then, my grandmother ran out of money, mm -hmm. so she can't put her in the hospital anymore. So we had to take her back home. That was when I was 10. So I, I completely dropped out of school because I need to nurse my mom, right? Because, like, she cannot move that well. 
So like I need to give her a bath, you know, I need to clean her, you know, I need to take out poop and pee, you know, I have to bring food inside. So I was with her 24 hours. And you're 10 years old at this point. I was 10 years old. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. And you're taking care of your mom. Yeah. And your and your family now doesn't have money. Yeah, we don't have any money. Okay. So um we don't have any money and there is no way that we're going to survive this winter. Uh, so when I was 10, my mom gets out of the hospital because we don't have any money to treat her. And then we came back home. Like, she seems to be doing really fine. But one day, she collapsed. Like, she just, she just like, really collapsed on, a, on the floor. And then, like, she's paralyzed again. And then, and then she was doing, like, she would, like, wake up unconsciously. You know, and then she would scream, you know, like, ah, I don't know, like, ah, because I think, like, she had a tumor in her head or something. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Or the last two years had been difficult. Yeah, her, really right? difficult for her. Speaking of which, just to make sure I understand, I'm assuming she didn't find your father? Yeah, she didn't find my father. But she she just went around looking for him? Yeah, looking for him. But she never found she him? She never found okay. him. Um, and that's why she came back. back. Yeah. So when she came back, she was a different person, and now you're responsible. Yeah, to take care of her. And it seems to be getting worse at this point. It's getting, yeah, really, really worse. And then, um, yeah, and then, like, she would scream at night, you know, because, like, her head really hurts. And then, or so, about a year, I had to still take care of her at home. You know, I have to take out. I need to clean her. I try to feed her. You know, I try to do any like, everything, but... Last about a month, you know, she couldn't eat. Like, she couldn't even, like, feel anything. She was just lying down there. And then eventually, um, 2011, May, she passed away. May 5th, she passed away without leaving any last words. Um, And, uh, no, so uh, before she died, like, somewhere around, like, when she was, like, conscious, she told me, like, Charles, if I had a whole like lamb, you know, I think I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing just fine, you know. If if I had a whole lamb, I would be just fine. Yeah, I'll, if I ate a whole you know, lamb, yeah, whole lamb, like I'll be just fine as you are. You know, it means like she's starving, you know, mm-hmm. she's really hungry. That like that's the last thing that I remember about my mom. <laughs> so you were ten. Yeah, I was. I was and that, 10. that was in 2011. That, no, that was no. 2005. Five. Oh, no, 2004. Sorry. Four. 2004. That makes sense. Okay. Got it. So th- how did you decide to escape? Because I, I can imagine that, I mean, this is a place where if you share a foreign movie with your friends, yeah, yeah. you get executed, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. or you get punished. Yeah. So this isn't a light decision. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you went from being 10 years old to, you know, you're here in the United States. Obviously, a lot of things happen. I mean, you're growing up with your grandma. Did yeah. she raise you? No, I mean, like, yeah, I went to, like, school, like, but uh, when I was 11, she couldn't take care of me anymore, because, like, you know, when I was 11, my mom passed away, mm-hmm. but, like, she's an old grandma, you know, she was, like, already, like, 78, you know, almost, like, eight years old, she couldn't take care of me, take care of me anymore, so she sent me to, um, to my aunt's house in, uh, Sariwon, and then I was living there about, like, a year, and then... Um, I wrote a letter to my father every single day saying like, hey, father, you know, because like my, my aunt apparently knows like where he is at oh. in China. So what happened was like my father was in China selling drugs and he sold successfully, but he got back traced. So he got he got backstabbed. So somebody told on him and then he got caught and he threw into prison for four years. In, in China. China? Yeah, okay. in China. Oh. So that's, but your aunt knew that? Yeah. And she didn't tell your, your mom? She didn't tell my mom. Do you know why? I don't know why. Okay. But... Is this your mom's sister? Yeah, it's it's my my mom's, like, oldest sister. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Uh, And then I... uh, Yeah, and then when I got to my aunt's house, she was forcing me to write a letter to my father every single day for... Every single month for, for like, 12 months. And then eventually my father wrote a letter letter back to me saying, okay, so uh, if... You know, like nothing, like nothing, like critical, nothing, like nothing much, you know, but like, hey, you know, thank you so much for taking care of my child, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then my aunts like exchanged that letter, right, to uh, like, like saying like, oh, if, if you come to my, if you come to China, I'll help you, you know, so like a basically like an invitation. 
mm-hmm. right? And then she bring that to government and saying like, okay, I got an invitation, you know, so can I get a passport? So, so, so j- your dad extended an invitation to you guys to come to China? So he was just saying, thank you so much, <laughs> right? But my aunt switched the letter saying, if you come to China... I'll Wait, she you. changed the letter? Yeah, changed How? the letter. She physically she, changed yeah, it? Yeah, she wrote it. She forged it. Yeah, she forged it. Oh, and then that's she pretty smart, I think. Oh, my God. Put it back in the envelope and brought it to the government. Whoa, right? that is some ninja stuff, That's man. a gutsy move. In yeah. North Korea, yeah. she North forged... Korea. Okay, so yeah. she changed your yeah. father's letter yeah, to exactly. make it look like he was inviting you yeah, guys. Inviting so the North Korean government, government would we'll give you a visa. Did it work? It worked. Yeah. No kidding. Now she needed money to travel, right? Now she knew because uh, she used everything to get a passport. And then this now is, she, this is your aunt, right? This is my aunt. Is yeah. your aunt hoping that all of you guys go to China? Just her. <laughs> just her. Yeah, Jeez. just her. She was gonna leave you behind. Some yeah. desperate shit here. Yeah, because like my grandmother had a lot of friends in China. So she's not going to China to look for my father, but she's going to look for her mother's friends in China. Mm-hmm. Because my grandmother works for a government. She has a translator between North Korean government and uh, Chinese This government. is the family that was connected, right? Yeah. 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 Had a background in government. Right. And then she was going to China to find them, you know, not my father. But she just needed a bridge, connection. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was the connection, which is my father in China. And then she gets, but now she doesn't have any money to go to China. So she writes a blackmail letter to my father saying, if you don't send me this much money, I'm going to kill your child, sell them to the black market as a meat, or I'm going to send them to orphanage. Bam. And my father says it. What the heck? You oh, know, my, yeah. What? Well, he didn't care before. He didn't care before, but like, he's like, yeah, I'm alive, it. you know, yeah. but like now, like I'm, my life is in threat. You know, he knows that like, cause like I send him like my photos, like every single month yeah. to my father. You were like, writing him for a year, you said. Yeah. About, about a year. About months. a year. So I now will. he's sort of connected again to yeah connected story. again okay. about like what I, how what i'm doing right. how i'm doing you do you know. know where he was at this time he was in uh he was in Changbaekhyun. that's called um it's in jilin jilin song jilin song. Yeah, yeah it's like but he's in china right he's in china so how yeah. close to the border is he he's really close to very the close to the border yeah, he's, he's living in border and where is your city you're living in with your aunt it's right next to pyongyang it's next to Pyongyang, so that's not close to the border. Uh-uh. It's, it's like really a, far. It's far. It's really far. Okay. Two days train um, trip. Got it. Um, yeah, and then uh, my father says it, and like, oh, my son is in risk. I, ne- I need to save him. So he sends my stepbrother. So apparently my two stepbrothers and two step two stepbrothers who uh, who were like, like 15 years, like 20 years older than me, they were living in North Korea. I didn't know. This is his other family. Yeah, he do- his older family. So he sends like this stepbrother to rescue me from my aunt's house. So when I was when I was thirteen, when I was thirteen, he comes, he picks me up. Your stepbrother. Yeah, my stepbrother, and he brings me to his house. And a year later, when I was fourteen, I didn't. So like that time, like before I escaped to China, that time I was watching like because my stepbrother was Chinese and he was bringing a lot of foreign media's. Mm. You know, from China to he North was going Korea. back and forth. Yeah, he was going back because he forth. has a passport. He has a passport, so he can move around as much he can as move, he wants. Yeah, whenever he wants. Got it. Just have to have money. So you lived with them for a year. For a year, okay. yeah. And then that time, like I watched foreign media's, you know, and like, um, like <laughs> James Bond, you know, Double uh, Seven, Bad Boys One, uh, like South Korean dramas, you know, having all those like. Uh, like a freedom thoughts, you know, like yeah, freedom thoughts. Freedom yeah, thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this the first time you've seen foreign movies? Yeah, that's actually the first time. Me watching, like, I mean, like, I watched a lot of like Soviet Union movies, some right. propaganda movies, right. you know, Chinese like multi dong. Yeah, but like Will Smith is a million times cooler than right. Exactly. Any of those. <laughs> so yeah. this is new for you. Yeah, this is like completely new. For what me. was that like? Like. At first, like, I didn't believe, you know, like, is this true? Like, I mean, like, wait, like, how is this possible? You know, like, if it's not a setup, you know, like, like, all I've learned about Americans are like with long nose, you know, long chins, like hairy face, you know, looks like a wolf, you know, trying to like invade North Korea all the time. Because that was what you were taught in school. Yeah, that was that that was what I was taught in school, right? 
but like watching the foreign media like they're so cool you know like stopping the bad guys you know like you know getting the money getting paid you know like, i'm like wait what I was like mind blowing, you know. I wanted, I wanted to be there, you know. I wanted to like experience that. So, wanted... what what goes through your mind when you see that? Is there a period where you think there somebody lied to me, or did you think that the movie was lying? At the moment, I thought movie was. You lying, thought the movie was right? lying. This is a movie moment. set, right? Yeah, it's with a movie fake set. Everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie set, right? But when I was fourteen, I get my first opportunity to escape North Korea and go to China. To my father because my father wanted to see me so my brother buys a broker uh in north korea and then the broker buys the this uh guard the the river oh, so guard he's like a people smuggler yeah basically. people okay. smuggler can right? we pause i just want to yeah. make sure i understand because yeah. this is so crazy yeah. what you're describing yeah. right now yeah. i just want to make sure that we're really understanding this journey yeah so 13 to 14 you're you're with your father's other family yes okay so and the plan is for your father to get you to China. Yeah, plan is to get me to China. Because the letter that your aunt sent him, right? Yeah, but but I mean, like, that's why my stepbrother came in and he saved me from my aunt's house and he took care of me, right? But my father wants to see me now uh, when I was 14. So whose idea was it to escape? Your uh, father's? My father's idea, Okay, right? At the first time. And I didn't know anything about you. I mean, I knew the China. first time? But, yeah, first time. Wow. So you've been... you. I, all right. <laughs> this is Come just, on, I man. Just, Come on. Let me, let me, let me tell my story. We are okay? totally enjoying your story. We just want to make sure <laughs> yeah, we're understanding. Yeah, let me tell Because this story. is so wild. So yeah. I just want to make it clear. So you're 14. The plan is now in motion. Yeah. Okay. So now, now I was, I was, so I went to China, right? So my, my stepbrother buys broker and then my stepbrother, uh, then the broker buys the, uh, the security guard and like, okay, what time, you know, during like, what day, what time, you know, like small kids going to mm -hmm. go to China and he's going to come back with money you know so don't shoot him and then i went to shop i went to reaper pretending i'm taking a shower you know was just you went to the river yeah oh, to pretend the like river. you're just going for a yeah swim. yeah so it's going for a swim this is the shower. river on the border yeah it's, it's, it's is this the yalu yeah it's the yalu river okay oh. so you're far but you have to take a train to get there. yeah I, I took a train for like two days is that hard to take a train no i mean like my brother bought like you know tickets and everything okay you know so, uh, so you guys can move somewhat freely yeah to the border is yes, this the summertime because i would imagine you go yeah. in the winter like i'm just going for a swim yeah. right. no, what are you <laughs> yeah, talking it's, about it's 20 below yeah it was uh 2008 June 2008 June 2008 yeah. you yeah. go down to June the river June 2008 yeah going down going down the river you know I was like I'm just like humbling you know like ah, 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 you know like ah, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just gonna go to swim over here you know and I was taking a bath you know like <laughs> was this the plan it was the plan they yeah. told you to do this yeah, to, yeah are you alone yeah I was alone yeah how did you know where to go because like because like um uh, the broker told me like a couple of days like in advance, like okay, so close it that way. Oh, that's wow. the he trouble. gave you directions. Yeah, he gave me directions. So he's like a coyote. Like yeah, it's like a, yeah, yeah. He's, okay. No way. Yeah, he's like a coyote. Yeah, and then yeah, and then I cross the river, and then like okay, so some guy with a hat, white hat, and a blue shirt, and the jeans, and like what kind of shoes? That's your father. Go find him. So your dad was supposed to meet you. Yeah. So my dad was in the other side of the China uh. with a taxi cab, right? So as soon as I cross the river, I get in the taxi cab. This and nobody, stuff. the guards aren't oh because they were bribed to pretend yeah, they didn't yeah, see you yeah, oh because the broker yeah, paid yeah, the broker them to not yeah, yeah. to look the other way yeah, I'm like yeah. how did you not get shot uh, yeah. across the border but still okay. that's impressive because yeah. there's a huge amount of land yeah and stuff. yeah so once you're on the other side of the river you're in China yeah I'm in China I'm and like, you see that you see your dad yeah I, I saw my dad and I got into a taxi cab and we drove straight to hotel I slept one night and then the next day we took like 12 hours bus to a little bit inside of China Charles, can we can we just ask you like yeah. the first night? Yeah, you're in the hotel. Yeah, you're in China. Yeah, you've never been outside of. I've never been outside of China. What was that like? I'm mean, to be honest, I'm just lying down in a hotel hotel room. You know, I didn't feel like where am I? But were you like what the what the hell, Dad? Yeah, this is some bullshit. Yeah. Like I've been stuck in this hellhole for a decade and a half. But you know, like. As a child, you know, like you never met your father, right? right? But you don't feel like that's your father, you know? It's sure. like a stranger, you know, like stranger. So was it awkward? To... It was kind of awkward, but like he was really good to me. He was nice. Yeah, he was really, really nice. You know, he's okay. trying to like get me anything. And first time in a farmer's market in China, right? I see a banana. And um, I was like, oh yeah, I've seen, you know, one of those in like the cartoons, you know, in North Korea. Yeah. I picked it up. 
I bite it off. With I just peel. try it with a peel on, right? Uh-huh. And my my dad just laughing his ass off like, you shouldn't supposed to eat like that. You should peel it off. And I was like, I was tasting it. It's so bitter. Yeah, you know? it's like, not good with the peel. <laughs> why is people eating banana? It's the, I don't understand, you know? But yeah, that was like first like like a like a stupid thing that I ever. I could just done. see you be like, oh man, oh yeah. man, these things are overrated. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> whose idea? This thing. It looks so much better in the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, so your your dad the next day? Yeah. You guys go out? Yeah. So so the next day yeah. we arrived at my father's place, right? And then near the border? No, it's it's far. Yeah, it's kind of far. Okay. From border, twelve hours away. I can show you later too. Okay. Um, I got to my dad's place. And then, like, I feel like I was like a child again, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of times, like, I had to grow up a lot faster than any other kids because of, I had to, you know, I had to be the man, you know, like, I had to be, like, I had to grow up to nurse my mom and live on my own, live on the street for a while. So you were homeless for a while? I was homeless too, because, like, when I was living with my aunt, my aunt and my uncle, they fought like a lot every single night. Well, she sounds like a horrible person given yeah. that she blackmailed your dad yeah. trying to kill you. So <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's she yeah. didn't get along with her husband either. So uh yeah, so I got so the the argument that ended me kicking out like kicked out, you know, mm-hmm. from the house. Oh, this was back in Korea. Back in Korea. You you right? did leave oh wow. Yeah. There's like yeah. more to the story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so like I you know like half the year. I was living on a street. Six months. Yeah, six. Months. You were homeless. Yeah, in I was North Korea. On the street. What does what is that like? I know we're moving backwards, but yeah. this is important. Yeah, it's just, put think, a pin in being in China with yeah, your dad and go yeah. back to being homeless in yeah. North Korea. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, being a homeless in North Korea, it's it's not easy. You know, it's like life or death. You know, like like even though you have a candy in your mouth, you know, but somebody come punch me in the like cheek and just take it. Is that a real thing that happened? It's a real thing. Yeah, you were real. eating candy. Somebody punched you to take the candy out of your mouth. I mean, like I'm just phrasing it that way. Oh, okay. But uh, I, understand. Like, I just want to make sure. Yeah, so okay. you have something. You, you know, have something. But you have to like spend it, or you have to eat it mm-hmm. as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they're gonna come in mm-hmm. and take it away. And take it. Yeah. yeah. Um. And you were what? Twelve? Thirteen? Yeah, I was. I was like twelve. And twelve and a half. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So you're you're homeless in North Korea. You've got to eat it or spend it, or somebody will get it. Yeah. From you. Yeah. So like, it's always like a fight. It's it's like a war. You know, you have to be prepared to like, like throw a punch like every single day, because like there's always a guy trying to come to like me and like trying to take take the things away from me. Either I don't have anything, right, or they're just gonna come to you and just they're gonna beat the shit out of me. Can you deal with that? They're gonna beat the crap out of me. You, know? you could say that it's fine, yeah. yeah. Where are you living? So I was living in uh, Sariwon at the time. On the street, just on, on the street. street, yeah, on the street, like a train station, um, like a boil nearby boiler. Oh, near the boiler to stay warm. Yeah, to stay warm because it's also winter. It was winter. Uh, oh my yeah. god, that's rough. <sighs> Korean winters are no joke. Uh, yeah, if you pee, right, it's gonna froze from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> if you spit out the. Your saliva, you know, it's gonna freezes oh, mid air. Yeah, and it's <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's uh, that cold. Yeah, is this common homelessness in North Korea? Yeah, it's a lot common. So like, there are a lot of other people. Yeah, in this area. Yeah, right. Who are so homeless. it's really competitive. You know, wow. And so nobody, it's other people without homes. Yeah, you're, yeah. As you put it, doing yeah. battle with to yeah. stay alive. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I was. I mean, China, let's go back to go China. back to yeah. China. Go back, back to you're China. back. With You've already been through all this stuff. That's yeah, like, well, I've already okay. been through all this stuff. So was it a relief then to be in China? Yeah, it was just so much relief because like, I feel like I can have like my future, right? I can have my dream, you know, and my dream promised the hope, you know, and hope promised tomorrow. What was your dream at that point? Just living my life normal, you know, to have a normal life. Yeah, have a normal life anywhere. You know? Anywhere, but North Korea. Just, just not North Korea, you know, because like I've or I'm like I'm going to like you know PC bar, you know, it's like a people like an arcade, you know. I'm going oh, the to PC arcade. bar. Yeah, PC uh, yeah, bar. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like I go there, you know, I play computer, you know, and I I play like arcade, you know, Street Fighter, King of Fighter, you know, and like, all those kind of stuff that older kids do, you know, are playing arcade and meeting, making friends. You know, I'm pretty like a like a social butterfly, even though I don't speak any Chinese. You know, <laughs> like. Hey, I'm from South Korea, you know. You were friendly. Korea. Korea. You said South Korea? Yeah, because I had to lie, you know, because if I told him like, I'm from North Korea, 
Ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into this. What happens if somebody finds out you're from North Korea? I I'll get into that. You'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. So I was living the dream in China, right? I was like I was still happy, you know, and uh, like because like I don't have to, you know, beg for a place to sleep overnight, or I don't have to beg for a food from the strangers on the street, right? I was living my life in freedom for a moment, but unfortunately, Chinese government didn't recognize North Koreans as refugees. And they captured me, and they deported me back to North Korea. How did they Korea. find you? How did they? So, uh, the North Korean, uh, so, uh, the Chinese citizen reported me to the government. Somebody in your neighborhood? Yeah, somebody in my neighborhood. How did they find like, out? Because like they've been keeping eye on like new like rivals, right? Mm. And then they see a kid, small kid, dark, you know, because like skinny. Chinese kids are fat, you know. Yeah. They're super like pale because they've been eating really well, but like, I'm really dark, short, you know, like. They could tell by my eyes, you know, like I was rolling, like gonna turn us, turn us to something, you know. <laughs> wow. Always alert, you know, because like Chinese kids, like they don't do that. Like, you don't, you like, stood out. Yeah, I stood out like pretty like wow. strong. So the neighbor, other people in the neighborhood, yeah, picked up on that. Yeah, they picked up on and it, and they called the yeah, they called the police. Oh my god. Yeah, and then nine months later, in two thousand nine January, police came to our house with uh with a gun, like uh, with a pistol. There's like uh like I think like eight or nine of them, and then like when I saw when I looked down, there's like a black cars just like surrounded like the apartment. That was scary. Like these guys, you know, they just barged into a room and like having a gun in their hand and like looking on the rooms. And then they handcuffed me, and then they took me to the jail. How old were you? I was I was fifteen. Was your dad there? My dad was there, but he couldn't do anything because he he has no way of proving that I'm his son. Oh man, yeah. And you know, I remember the day I lost all hope. You know, I was in the back of a Chinese police truck, chained to like a couple of other North Koreans. You know, um, and it's in Chinese jail. You know, I'm in a Chinese jail right now with like a couple of with all the North Koreans, and. Like the living situations, you know, like the people that how they fed us. It's like they fed us with like the food from leftovers, you know, food like leftover food from the from the guards. And then like finally, it's a deporting day. So I was I I, I was in the Chinese jail for like two weeks. And then it's the it's the day that finally we getting we're getting deported to North Korea. And you know, like we turned a corner, and I could see the North Korean border in the distance. And I was so scared and afraid that I might be in big trouble. You know, as soon as I step back into North Korea, and I and I knew that you know I'm gonna be in big trouble. And then the the truck rolled to a stop at the border, and the guards were screaming at me to get off the truck. And you know, I was so scared, like. Like they were just, they were like treating us like an animal. And then, yeah, so they, uh, I was, I got onto another, another like a jeep with a couple of other North Koreans. And then we, we got transported, uh, where? transport, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we got, yeah, tra- transported, right? Transported, yeah. Transport, yeah, transported to like other, like a uh, interrogation, first interrogation part, mm-hmm. right? And then, yeah, I got to the first interrogation part because, like, there are so many people, so many North Korean defectors that are in the jail. They have no place to put us in, right? So I had to stand right in front of the cell, right, in 2009, January. And then, like, like, you have to know, like, if you get caught in China, like if you get caught nearby the border, it's fine. You know, like, oh, they're like, so after the interrogation, right? Or if you're trying to go to China for just looking for the food in the border, that's fine. You know, like, oh, yeah, just go to the labor camp, labor camp for four years, and you're fine. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't throw that in the fine column. Uh, uh, four years of labor sorry. camp. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's like the punishment, right? So, so I mean, like, mean they don't like kill you or something? they don't kill you, okay. right? But like, it's just like a basically a death sentence, you know, because 
it's really hard to survive in a labor sure. camp for four years. Um, but if you get caught deeper inside of China, which is Mongolia, you know, which is like around like really south of China, that's a red flag because which means you're moving towards somewhere which mm-hmm. is going to South Korea, right? Mm. So it's worse. It's for them. worse. Now you were 12 hours away from the border. But I was still within, you were still within, yeah, within okay. like the like safe range, you know, safe region. And then I was standing right in front of the cell and this one lady, she bites off her vein and she bleed to death. She bit her yeah, wrist bit open? Her, yeah, she bit her wrist o- wide open. Cause she didn't want to... Because like she got caught in Mongolia uh-huh. and the government knows that like she's trying to defect to like South Korea. So they wouldn't let her go, and she, I I heard like I heard like a stories about her like from the fellow like prisoners, like she she was there for a long time, you know, and she was getting interrogated like every single day for a couple of hours. They wouldn't let her sleep. They wouldn't like let her eat. They wouldn't like, and then like and then the office got cleared out. So in the jail, there is no room in the jail, so they couldn't put us in the jail. So they put me in a separate office. This is within the detention center. No, it's an, it's not in a detention center. So this is uh this is a boibu. Boibu is stands for secret police in North Korea. Oh, secret it's like police. a secret secret police. You like in a so you, do you even know where that was? Yeah, it's in a Namyang. It's it's in a right across the border. Yeah, but it's near it's, the border. There's like a special yeah special like place, place okay. yeah interrogation part, and then I'm sitting I'm sitting. In the office, and across the room, I hear a scream. You know, like guys, like, "Oh my God, my legs are broken! Oh, please forgive me, my legs are broken, my ribs are broken. I'm bleeding to death." You know, I'm like hearing all the screams. You know, and I'm like terrified. Mm-hmm. Like that's gonna be me. Like mm-hmm. they're gonna, they're gonna kill me. But luckily, I was only fifteen, so um, I didn't get bitten. That I didn't get bitten, bitten like beaten. Yeah, beaten that bad. He just like slapped me, you know, like, kicked me, you know, stomach for a couple of times. And what is what are they trying to do? Are they trying to punish you? No. Or are they I trying c- to get information from you? So they're trying to get information from. What us. what sort of stuff do they want to know? They ask about everything. Like everything, like literally everything. What did you do in China? China. What did you eat? What did you feel? What did you see? What, what did, did you, you feel? Yeah, what did you feel what in does that China? Mean? Like, okay, so you've seen like a couple of social medias, you know, how did you feel about that? You know, like you've seen like people talking about Kim Jong il. How do you feel about that? Like you've seen a lot of like cars, you've seen a lot of like buildings, a lot of tall buildings. How how do you feel about that? What are they trying to to suss out in those questions? It's like I learned that Kim Jong il is bad. That's right. the things that they want to get. Because if you f- if you say that, then they're gonna punish you more. They're gonna kill us. Yeah. If wow. you say that, they're gonna. There is no way out. If if you say that, but I have to say like I know what to say. You know, like I know like because I, the things that I've seen in China, but like, I couldn't say. You knew how to lie. Yeah, I I know like I know so, how to like. So what do you say? Like, so what oh, you say? I saw capitalism and how it ruins people. I mean, <laughs> no, what do you I mean, say? I, I mean, like, I saw. Oh, yeah, so like. The Bad Boys Two was not yeah. as good as Bad Boys <laughs> yeah. One. I, I learned that say. Will Smith is awesome, but not as awesome <laughs> yeah, as not Kim Jong Il. Yeah, right? Kim Jong Il is he's, he's the badass. You know, he, he's, he's, he should be in Bad yeah, Boys Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, I was a child, right? So he they didn't like really ask me that questions like a lot, like multiple times. They just like. Let's just get it over with. They were trying to get it over with. Yeah, just like, and oh, you're yeah. 15, right? I was 15. I was like, oh yeah, I was just living with my dad. Oh, I was just, I don't know, I don't know, like, I'm, like I don't know, I don't know, like I don't know. And they're like, what do you mean you don't know? And just get up and punch me in the face for a couple of times. Um, and then like 20 days, I was in there. You know, and I know that. And then I got you're there for three weeks. Yeah, I was in. They're there for questioning three you for yeah, three, weeks. three weeks. Charles, I just have to ask you. You seem really brave, I guess is the word, and smart. Do you think you were always that way? Or had you been through so much stuff already that you sort of knew how to handle a situation like that? I mean, like when it comes to your life or death, like that's, I think that's like in people's instinct. You know, first thing that they would do is like trying to protect your life. You know, sometimes I heard like people like, 
like when they're in a dying situation, it's like, oh, please kill me. You know, I don't think that's something that they would say. They're like, oh, please save me. You know, like, yeah, but um, I don't know. I think maybe it's in my blood. I don't know, but um, like, I believe that everyone could do it. You know, everyone could like, because they've got the guts, you know, they have, it's, it's written, like, it's written in DNA, you know, it's written in code, you know, so like, you can't escape that. But yeah, but I think, yeah, if it comes to life or death, you will, you will do it. So at that point, you were just, you knew you wanted to survive. Yeah. So you were doing whatever you had to do. Yeah, whatever I had to do, right? And then, you know, you know, most of like 15 years old kids, you know, American child kids are in sophomore in high school, right? Yeah. You know, they go to like sports practices, you know, they're busy with like, um, um, sports practices you know and like doing everything you know sophomore thingy yeah yeah the hardest thing in your life are wind sprints on the football team yeah mm -hmm. and a little acne or something yeah, yeah. Some, some wi -Fi, PSATs. my wi-fi is so slow yeah <laughs> oh, i cracked yeah, my phone screen yeah. and you're in a in a secret police so. i was in yeah. a labor camp so uh right after 20 days i got transported to um to a re-educational detention center now, are they actually teaching you things there or are they just punishing you there? They are brainwashing us, right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you work there as long as they want you to work there, right? And then at night, they'll force us to recite the rules of the camp, right? So at age of 15, I was in a detention center working like 18 hours. I don't know. 12, 16, 18, eating like 50, 150 kernels of corn a day for nine months, you know? And, you know, I thought they're going to release me pretty soon because, like, I was only 15, you know? And, and that's what they told me too, you know? And I was told that I would be only, I would be there for only a couple of mm -hmm. weeks because I was so young, right? I was only 15. I worked really hard for the couple of like weeks, right? Because I didn't want it to get bitten again. Yeah. Right? And months passed and I was not released. In that detention center, I was only allowed to eat 150 kernels of corn a day. And I started to lose weight, and I could see my rib cage. And I had to do like whatever I had to do to survive. And one morning, we were marching in our rows to my work site, and and on the side, I saw a dry vomit. Dry vomit. Dry vomit on the row. Somebody like I don't know, somebody sick or somebody drunk, so I threw up, and then I saw a dry rice, and the vomit. <laughs> And I was so hungry that I got on my hands and knees and began picking the rice out of the dry vomit. And so you picked the rice out of the dry vomit. Yeah, I ate it. Oh wow! It was like, it was like um like a sand, a dirt, you know. And I didn't stop eating the rice, vomited rice until the beating from the guards were too unbearable. And at night, the guards were storming storm into our cells and forced us to recite the rules of the camp. And if you misquoted even one rule. Like, they were, like, forced to stand all night reciting the rules until work began the next morning. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. What What are the rules of the camp? Like, I, ne I would never talk about life outside of North Korea. I would never talk about, like, like bad things about Kim Jong-il, what I see, how I feel. I would never talk about, like, anything that I saw in China, you know. I will just live my life like a, like a, like a bug. You know, and these are the rules of the camp. Yeah, you have to you have to know these rules. You have to memorize those rules. How many are there? There's like a I can't remember. There's like forty. So it's a list of forty sort yeah. of principles, right? Yeah, principles like there's a wall like that. Mm -hmm. There's like a wall, a poster on yeah, the wall, a poster yeah, on the wall, and that's like the size is twice as big as this this room, and then there's like twenty people, thirty people, you know, lying in the the floor and sometimes like until this until, room is like 10 by 15 and there's 20 people in there double as this size oh double as this yeah, double, okay yeah double as this still mm -hmm. yeah and uh like 
we sit in a rows, and then we face those like the posts, and then we recite. There is like a like a like it's like oh like I'll never do this. I'll never do that. I'll never do this. You know, I'll never talk about life outside of North Korea. I'll be a good citizen. I'll never escape. You know. Is this what they mean by re-education? Yeah, re-education. They're basically train, training, trying to train yeah, you. Yeah, trying to train us and trying to let us, trying to like work us off. You know, like trying to like like let us work, right? Right. And what's going through your mind while you're reciting those principles? I was starving. You were just trying, again, trying to survive? Yeah, trying to survive. Did, was there any part of you that thought maybe I'll... Maybe I'll actually follow these principles, or in your mind, you're like, "This is bullshit." This is bullshit. You knew it was bullshit, yeah. even though you were hungry. I was so angry. I was, I was like, hangry. You know, like, yeah. like <laughs> it's like a new yeah. level of angry. Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm gonna get the hell out of get the hell out of here, and mm. I'm gonna escape again. I'm gonna escape until I, I'll, I'll die trying again. Whoa! Like, in the camp, you thought in that. the camp, right? Because like we're working every single day for nine months, no rest from seven a.m. to whenever they say stop. It could be like one a.m., it could be twelve a.m., it could be eleven p.m. Like no matter what, right? Eating fifty pieces of kernel per meal, right? So they have a job for counting those corns, right? And for nine months, nothing else. They have a job. Yeah, somebody's a, job is yeah, to count, count those corns. Mm, right? That just pissed you off. Yeah, it's like. The whole thing. And then the guards, right? We are working in a field, whatever it is. We are building a concrete. You know, we are uh, building a building. You know, we are farming. We are constructing. We are uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a forest cutting down the tree. They tell us every day, you escape again, right? We don't care, but don't get caught. The guards are yeah. to telling you, yeah. don't get caught. Don't get caught. If you get caught, you're going to die. This is what happens if you get caught. We can't stop you. We can't prevent you from escaping it. But we can do these things to you once you get caught, right? Hmm. And I'm listening that every day, you know? And like, and like the main principle is like, if you escape, if you get caught, you know, you're dead. Basically, you're dead. So like, don't have that thought, you know? That's what they're trying to tell us. That's part of the re-education. Yeah, that's part of... Like, but in your mind, somehow that got translated as, I'm going to do it anyway because... I'm going to do it anyway because like... Because this place is terrible. Yeah, I mean... But in other people... Go ahead. I want to... Yeah. I'm just trying to understand yeah, where your mind is at that point. Like, that's like basically everyone's mind. You everybody know? in the camp felt that yeah, way? Yeah, everybody felt in that way because like... Because like... There was like one another like weak guy, you know. I was like I was the youngest in the like detention center, right? And there is like another like weak, you know. Like there's always uh, like a head and there's a tail, right? And I was below tail, but the tail always telling me like, you know, I'm gonna get out of here, and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. And then a lot of people actually feel that way too. And then funny enough, I was in a ref uh, refugee. Uh, international refugee camp in Southeast Asia. And then I met this dude from the from the detention center. You ran into somebody? Yeah, you were in detention yeah with? ran into someone. Because I remember that guy because he stole my shoes, <laughs> right? <laughs> because like, I had a pretty good shoes. When I when I got into the detention center, that's I had unreal. A, that's unreal. Oh, from really, China? Yeah, from China, right? And so he wanted your Chinese shoes. Yeah, so it was really new, you know? And it was really, like, comfortable. But that guy... Saw my shoes and he liked it. He's like, "Can I have the shoes?" I'm like, "No, I, you can't. Like, what am I gonna wear?" You know, like he's gonna be like, "You can't wear mine." And his shoes like fell apart. And I'm like, yeah. "No, you know." But he took it anyway. And then he told me his story much later on. Like, yeah, your shoes helped me a lot. You know. So while he was, you know, doing the interrogation, right? He stole a paper clip and he swallowed it. Oh, right. And then he went to the bathroom. He pooped it out. And then he kept it, right? He kept the paper clip. And then while like he's done working at the, uh, I don't know, he's like he's stayed for like a year in a uh, detention center. While he was like deep, like a transferring to like other facility, other like a transferring to his like hometown, he was handcuffed, right? He was handcuffed around the table, in the in the in the train, right? And then while this um, while the police officer, right? They're um. Their um their post officer who's like moving them while they fell asleep, he took out the paper clip 
And he picked his handcuffs? Yeah, he picked his handcuffs and he escaped. Wow. Right? He escaped to, he, he escaped and then he escaped to China again and he worked in China about a year. And then at the same time, I use oh sorry, yeah. I'm gonna I'm not gonna spoil anyway. <laughs> Are you gonna come back to that? Yeah, I'm gonna come back okay, to that. Great. Okay, great. This is yeah. you're already like yeah. this is the best story yeah Amazing. and then yeah and this then incredible and then nine months later i was finally released from the labor camp uh from the detention center because i have lost so much weight that i was worthless worker you know i couldn't even lift my arm or even stand up you know i have like i was like a bones and skins so there was no point there's no point there. of keeping me right mm -hmm. so like one one day like this um the head of the detention center comes out and like counting our heads right how many like and then he's like screaming and yelling at these kids like this like guards right what the heck are you guys doing send them home we don't need them you know like we don't need them to work for me you know like why aren't you doing your job you send those guys home you know you send those guys to like whatever they belongs you know and then next day two police officers shows up and then they took me away. Wow. What what job were you doing in the camp? I was doing everything. I was doing like literally everything that adults do. What 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 kind of work? Uh it's everything. Literally everything. What does like that mean? Construction. Okay. Uh building bricks, building concrete, um, farming. Um So you're outside? Outside. Always like we are always working outside of the camp, right? Let's say for example it's raining. You can't work. There's no work, right? Then you go you you still working within campus, right? So there is a bunch of sandbags and bricks. Sandbags. Yeah, sandbags mm -hmm. and bricks, right? There's like a, a a pile of sandbags, and then you move the sandbags point A to B in the morning, and in the afternoon you move that back sandbag from B to A. Oh, they're just having you do work, even it worthless stuff, just yeah, to keep you guys. Yeah, how, yeah. how much of the work was meaningless, and how much was actually Supposed to accomplish something like ninety nine percent of the work that I, that we did was actually building, you know, like constructions mm -hmm. and you know, farmings and uh, real like, stuff. Yeah, real stuff. And like one percent was like sometimes like it rains, you know. I and, see. They just wanted to keep yeah, you busy. Yeah, but keep us okay. busy, you know, so that we don't think about you know like escaping again. You know, right. That's yeah. their method. Is that's the it. camp? Go ahead. I was going to say there's there's eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand people in these labor camps. So but, yeah, but that's like. There's all different kinds of levels of labor camps, right? So the first level is re-educational training camp, hmm. right? Is that what you were in? No, okay. I was in a detention center. So that's another level. That's another level. Okay. That's like really, um, that's only for North Korean defectors. Oh, that's not for. Uh, that's like a. It's like a detention center for North Korean defectors. So where they get transferred to their hometown hmm. and they get judgment and then they go to um, re-educational uh, labor camp, which is like a four years, right? And then there is like a re-educational and there is like a work re-educational like a labor camp for like six months or something. That's the lowest for six months. And then uh, there is like a four years of a re-educational re camp. Mm -hmm. And there is a political labor camp. Political labor camp is the highest. You never get out of there. You're born there, you die there. Because like I don't, I wasn't there. I'm not from political labor camp, but I'm going to. Uh, North Korean defector, like re-education or detention center. Okay. But yeah, so I got out of there and then I went back to my stepbrother's house. That was 2000, 2009, October. So I was in the labor camp. Sorry, I was in a detention center for nine months. And then I spent like months trying to regain my strength. So you're about 16 at this I was point? yeah I was around six, I was around sixteen okay. yeah, but you have to know there's like um I was born nineteen ninety four, right, and then cause like Korean age in United States is different, cause they count it. One year old. When one you're year born. like no when you're in their stomach they count it from the stomach. Right. Right. Mm. So when you're born it's already one year. Oh okay. Right and so then, you're really fifteen. Yeah, I was at the I was at the fifteen. Right. Actually, when right. I got released. And then I spent like months trying to re like regain my strength. And after spending like months trying to regain my strength, I needed to find a job. Without any money, it was like impossible to support like myself. Was your stepbrother welcoming? He wasn't welcoming. Was not, not welcoming. He was because like he was doing I mean he was doing fine, but in two thousand ten there was a currency devaluation. 
happen in North Korea. I'm not sure if you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it killed like thousands of people. Like because the the money that they were saving and running for their businesses just became worthless. Exactly. It's so, like a lot of like our neighbors, you know, committed suicide because like one day they had something, one day they don't have anything, and they have no hope of living. So uh, my brother lost all the business, so I got kicked out, right? And then I had to f- support myself, so I needed to find a job. So Wait, I- so you're on your own again? And I'm on, I'm on my own. Um, do you have a place to live? I don't, but I found it. Okay. Um, I was working in a coal mine. Um, like where I'm from, like the coal mine is really popular, and I had to lie, uh, my age to get in there, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm 18, you know, like I cannot work, cause like. It was really trendy at the time. I find it really ironic that they're concerned with child labor laws and literally no other aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, he just got out of a detention center slash labor camp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, you're, you're, you're old enough to go to a labor camp and be basically t- work tortured, but yeah. you can't, you're too young to work in this coal mine. For a proper yeah. amount of time. Yeah. yeah. But you got this job. I got this job. Did right? you just wander into a coal mine? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I started working in a coal mine when I was paid only in rice, right? Six days a week, I went into the cold, damp tunnels of the mine. And most of the boys that working in the mine were my age. We will push a thousand pound steel core cart miles into the mine. You're pushing the mine cart? Mm-hmm. It's a mine coal cart, right? Coal cart. It's like empty coal cart. It's already like a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Yeah, because it's pounds. all metal. Right. Right. It's all metal. Mm-hmm. And you guys are pushing it yeah, into, into the mine. Yeah, into the minefield. So they're not mechanized. They're not mechanized. They're like, hand, they're like man Manual. Powered. Everything is yeah. manual because like, there's no power. And it's all young guys, 15, yeah, it's all like, 14. Yeah. So the youngest I've seen is like 12. 12 And then old. the oldest I've seen is like 80. Yeah. 80 year old yeah, man in there? old man. And they're paying you guys in rice. Yeah. Is that common? That's really common, yeah. They don't pay us with like, but they provide housing. They provide meals, three meals a day. Okay. And then at the end of the month, they will pay us 30 kilograms, 30 kilograms of rice per month. So it's just slavery. Basically. It's like subsistence, basically. They're just keeping you fou- uh, fed and housed. Yeah, fed okay. and housed, yeah. So you were in the coal mine for how long? Yeah, for about a year, you know. And within that year, like... Like, I have made a lot of friends, you know. I, uh, you know, I was, like, hanging out with them, you know, hang, hang, like, having really good time, you know, like, with, it's all, like, my age, you know. It's like, we were, like, at night, you know, we will go nuts, you know, we would drink, you know, we will party, you know. Where'd you get alcohol? Uh, they feed us. They oh, they give you, right? They, 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 they give you Because, like, when you, when you breathe cold in your, uh, in your lungs, yeah. the only thing that it could wash away is alcohol. Yeah, so... um, I'm not sure about the science on that, but I'm pretty sure they're just getting you drunk so that you forget that you have coal dust in your lungs. Really? (laughs) Yeah, I don't think... Because when you swallow things, it doesn't go into your lungs. But like when you breathe, right? Probably. Uh, It's like a disinfectant though, maybe. That's what they mean. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're just getting you drunk so you don't complain about the fact that everybody's got... Either way, uh, you guys didn't mind. Yeah, I I really didn't mind. Yeah, you're 15. This is so wild. So this was not a bad period for you, really. I mean, I know it's not ideal, but like... I feel like relatively, relatively, this is is way better than getting tortured by guards at a camp. I'm guessing this was a step up for you. Yeah, this is a step up for me, but I lost a lot of friends. You lost a lot. You of lost them. Because the coal mine accident, you know, cave sure. And like sometimes the coal cart will flip, right? And then sometimes it will land on people. So uh, like if you if you see if you got out of the coal mine, right? And then sometimes my my um my rain rain boots, it's leaking. So I can't tell it's a blood or it's a cold water, you know, because mm-hmm. it's so sticky, you know. Ah. Uh. It could be blood, you know? You know what I mean? Like, because, like, sometimes you'll land it on people. You'll crush people, you know? There's, like, people losing arms, legs because of the coal mine accidents. You know, there's, like, a coal cart, right? Imagine, like, with a coal, you know, it's, like, five kilograms, thousand kilograms of, like, cold, right? Wet cold, right? Mm-hmm. And then plus thousand pounds of a steel coal cart. So it's kind of it's a 2,000 pound, you know? And two ton, right? Two ton. No, no, no. One ton? Doesn't really matter. Really heavy car pull. No, 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 no. So, uh, oh yeah, thousand pound is five hundred kilograms, right? Mm-hmm. So which is half a ton. 
2,000, one ton, right? Imagining that kind of like heavy weight is landing on people. Like it'll just crush you. This yeah. was like a regular occurrence. It's not regular. It's but it not, happened. It happened like often, you know, like cave-ins are really often because a lot of people want to make money, you know, so they claim that they know how to set up the frame in the coal mine, mm-hmm. but they really don't. You know, they just want to get paid more because like, if you know how to do that, they will pay you a little bit more. Right. They're trying to get out as much coal as possible. Yeah, right. And right. the so safety. Like, I'm yeah. assuming there are no like safety regulations. No. <laughs> there's no such thing. Yeah. There's no such thing. It's like, right. just as, as long as you have a helmet, you have a, like a like a flashlight right. and you have a rain boots, so you have a glove, you're safe. That's the purpose. Go away. Wow. You know? wow. so, the, so these guys, they're, they're men, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're all men. Job. No, no, I mean like there's women's too. There are women. In a th- lot of women's. Oh, okay. Yeah. So men and women. Yeah, and men you guys are women. hanging out. We're hanging out after hours. After drinking. hours, drinking, drinking, you know, and partying, partying. and watching movies, you know, and like. So you can watch movies at yeah, this point too. Yeah, yeah, it's like illegally, you know. But coal mine is like the place where like every like, you know, like criminal, you know, like with like a bright oh. mind that you know, like people with like oh want to party, you know, they come in, right, and then they bring like South Korean dramas, they bring like foreign movies, you know. Wait, I'm sorry. Why does coal mining attract former criminals in North? I mean, America? I mean, like young millennials. You know, they do that a lot. They because, like that job. Yeah, they like that job because, like, they get paid right, and they they get paid rice, and then they can sell that rice, and then they make they can make money out of it. You know, for so like, for example, like people without any family, it's really a good deal for them. You know, because I have no family to protect, I have no family to pay. I get I get fit like three times a day. Right, and I have like I have a night off, and then I get every single month I get thirty kilo- kilograms of rice. And in North Korea at the time, per like a per kilograms of rice was like five thousand one, right? So imagining you're selling thirty kilograms of rice and then getting that as a cash. Mm. That what you did. That's what I did. Too. So you became an entrepreneur. Yeah, kind entrepreneur, of. Yeah. So you're like arbitraging your rice yeah, rations. Yeah. But at the same time, like I had a lot of like memories of, you know, China because like, you know, being free, you know, and watching all those people, you know, like injured, you know, and uh, people who didn't make it out. And like, like I thought about it like, oh, my God, that's going to be me one day. Right. It's only a matter of time. So sooner or later, I'm going to be like that. And, you know, I knew how hard it is, like, it is to escape North Korea without any money or food. And I knew that if I was caught, like, I could be killed again. Like, I could, I could be killed this time because mm-hmm. I'm, like, this is second time escaping. You know, so there is no mercy. But those kind of risks overweighed at working in the dark coal mine every day until it was my turn to lose a limb or die. Right? So which one is worth it? Yeah, you're like, do I stay here and possibly die or grow old doing this yeah. crazy job, or do yeah. I try to get free? Yeah, try to get. So free. while you're working at the mine and selling the rice to yeah. make a little extra money, in the back of your mind, you're yeah. already planning. Yeah, planning on like escaping. Right? And what does that plan look like? All right. Yeah. So um, so I worked I worked in the mine about a year, and I realized, you know, that it was my time to escape North Korea again. And you know, I know how hard it is how how hard it is, you know, escaping North Korea would be without any money or like food, you know. Cause like, I wasn't really good at saving money, even though I was planning on saving some money. But uh, you didn't save a lot. You spent it on it's like spending on like you know like partying. Will Smith DVDs. <laughs> Will Smith DVDs. Will Smith DVDs. <laughs> yeah, right. I was a big fan of Will Smith, so um, he's he's a big ins- like he's really inspirational to North Koreans. Will Smith is inspirational to North Koreans. Yeah, yeah. Like at least like for me, you know, for me and my friends, I want to be a Will Smith. You know, <laughs> so, no. but yeah, um. James Bond, you know. Sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and I knew how hard, how hard is skipping North Korea would be without any money or food. And I knew that if I was caught, you know, I could be killed. But those risks overweighted working in the dark coal mine every day until it was my turn to the limp or die. So one morning, uh, instead of entering the mine, I walked off the path and began running. And uh, I... You know, I ran, ran off from the coal mine and I was living on the street for three months. So I escaped in it, escaped coal mine in 2011, May of 2011. And then on a humid day in August, I was lying down on a hillside. I have no plans whatsoever. I was just homeless because I didn't want to die in a coal mine. 
I escaped, but I have no way how I'm gonna get to China. But I was lying down on a hillside, and in the distance, I saw a train come to stop, and people were exiting out with train cars, middle of nowhere. I'm like, I wonder if I can steal something. <laughs> and I walked down the, down the path, and I looked at the sign. It says Pyongyang, from Pyongyang to Hesan. That Hesan is like the border town, right? I'm like, oh my god, this is my chance. I need to get on that train. Like about like hour, so I I walked into like the crowds and I you know I try to like blend in and I was pretending I was belong there. And then as soon as the power came back, or as soon as the train trying to move again, people were you know uh, people were trying to get into the train and I joined the line. And and the guard stopped me and oh, asked man. me like, oh, can I see your documents? Can I see your birth certificate? I'm like, oh, shoot. And I lie that oh, my mother had them and that she was already on the train. And he nodded, and I I had a tray for the train bathroom to hide. For the next two days, I was hiding on the train. You know, sometimes I have to climb out of the window, hide on the top of the train. Or sometimes I have to come down and sit on the hitch between the two cars to avoid the guards. And if I was caught, you know, um, if I was caught, you know, I'll be ended up in a labor camp somewhere, most likely. In the middle of the, I think it was a night. Yeah, I was almost the border town when the hand of guard grabbed the back of my neck and dragged me to a holding cell on the train. A guard found you yeah, on the train? Me, yeah, on the train. Because it was like a midnight and I was so cold. God. And I was like sleeping in the, in the like a nearby bathroom. And then suddenly like I felt something kicking in my back. Mm. And then the guard dragged me to a holding cell on the train. And there are, there are two other boys in the room who have been caught too. And as the guard locked the door to the cell, he, to- he told us that we will be handed over to the authorities. At the, ne- at the next stop. Is the crime taking the train or trying to escape? They don't know that you're trying to escape yet. They don't know that, yeah. It's uh, just illegal to ride yeah, the train. Yeah, illegal to okay. ride the train. So like, like, oh, well, you'll be handed over to the police at the next stop. You know, I was like, gosh. And then, you know, I thought about like how terrible the detention center had been. You know, like long days of manual labor, sleepless night that I've, you know, like spent remembering the rules and the constant feelings of hunger. And I refused to let that happen. I refused to let that happen again. So as the train began to slow down for the next stop, I saw a window was unlocked. So I pushed it open and squeezed out of the small opening, and I jumped off the moving train, rolled into a ditch, and began sprinting for some nearby trees. I walked for like hours, illegally catched a second train. And two days later, I finally made it to the border town. Yeah. You jumped out of the moving train. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. (laughs) Because the the train was preparing to stop. So it wasn't that fast. Okay. And then, like, on the side, it was like a, like a, it's like a grass. You know, if it was a hard rock, you know, probably that. I probably broke something, but I'm fine, you know. I love how to you this is not a that big of a deal, but to us, I can't even imagine. I would not jump out of a moving train. I don't care how slow it's going. <laughs> a moving train, you're stuck in a room that a guard has put you in. I think, I don't know, I think I just try to understand the psychology of that because I'd be like, no, they put us here. This is where I have to stay. I'll explain myself when I, yeah, when I right? talk to the police. But at this point, you've been through so much. You're just like, yeah. you know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I know what to do, you know, because like, that's like regular day life for North Korean like homeless, mm-hmm. you know, because they get caught all the time and they were sent to like um the orphanage. But a lot of kids escape orphanage because that's like worse than living on a street because they don't feed you in orphanage. So a lot of orphanage kids would escape like, you know, from the orphanage. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so you're in the border town now. Yeah. Right? Now I'm finally in the border town. Right. And then when I first escaped North Korea in 2008, I, I met a few friends at the Hesan City. And then I went into his house, right? And like 5 a.m. 5 a.m. in the morning. 
and like, hey, you know, like I'm trying to skip a game. Will you come with me? Because I needed somebody, you know, because this before in 2008, when I escaped, I had somebody in my back watching over me. But this time, like I'm completely on my own. You know, like I don't know how, how I'm gonna cross. You know, I don't know how I'm how I'm how I'm gonna like get around the river. You know, because there is like rules. You know, seven a.m. to seven p.m. You can only allow to go during that time. Otherwise, if you wander around the river, you're gonna get shot. Because like they're they think think of you as like escapee. You know, mm-hmm. and you don't have the protection of the broker. I don't have the protection anymore. So I was, I was like trying to like convince this cat you know, to escape with me, right? And he, was, he said yes. He's gonna escape with me. I'm like, oh my god, thank goodness, you know, because that kid knew like really well around the border and like a river which is shallow, you know, which is like. And then like we're planning on escaping, like, so we got so yeah, we're planning on escaping the next day and the at night. But like this kid goes out and comes back and saying like, I don't think I can escape with you anymore because I met this chick. You know, she, uh, so like in North Korea, like it was August, right? So there's like a um, chestnut farm in the mountain, like a, like a wild chestnut. And then you sell it at the black market. And then you go camping there to collect the chestnut. But this guy knows one girl who, like who he, he has crush on her, right? And he finds out that this girl is going to chestnut farm. And then she invited him to go with her. And he's like, dude, this is my only chance to get oh, to know her. God. I'm like, guy, what guys will do just to get a <laughs> Right? I'm like, now I'm sitting here. I'm like, I really hope that that girl was worth it. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, should I, should I leave the most oppressive regime on earth? Yeah, but I might get some at this yeah, chestnut but... farm. So, <laughs> I might get sorry, late. bro. No, like, yeah, I might get laid at the <laughs> chestnut farm. He skipped escaping for a date. Yeah. So, um, so he, he better have married that girl. Yeah. I. Do you know? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure. No idea. I'm not sure. I have no idea, like what what she have done. But did you feel like you had to ask somebody else for help because doing it alone is scary, and having somebody with you makes it more possible? Or did you just need him to tell you where to go? Like, I mean, like, cause like he would be like mental, like guide, right? I mean, like having mental guide. Yeah, having somebody next to me, you know, mm-hmm. even though we get caught, mm-hmm. you know, we have like better explanation, right? Oh, we're just friends, you know, wandering around. It's just like, oh, like we just, you know, escaped, you know, and like no big deal. But like by myself, like I have to explain myself, right? So I guess like having him next to me, I guess it, like, gave me a lot of you know like motivation, right? To like go a little further but for myself i didn't know if, if i could do it you know but i'm already determined you know i'm not even though i'm gonna die like i don't want to die in there you know i'm gonna die here so in the afternoon the next day right in the afternoon i walked into the river that divides north korea and china which is yellow river and then i hid in the tall grass for i don't know until the darkness and I couldn't really move. I had to just remain like like this position, like a looks like a shrimp, you know, because because like it wasn't windy, you know, and the grass was like whole still, you know. And if it's if they see it's moving, because they're a flashlight, you know, mm-hmm. if it's is moving, they're gonna come down and check, right? So I couldn't move at all. And when I have like, it was finally dark. And I thought it was my time. And then I slowly walked into the water. And then I was like walking, walking. And like my brain is completely blank. Like I don't think about anything. But just I just feel the cold water. You know, it's so cold. And like, like my heart is like beating in my throat too. And then halfway into the river, I heard, I thought, yeah, I, yeah, I slipped on a rock and I <sighs> let out a scream. Oh, man. Because like, I'm like, because the water current was so fast and like, I couldn't do anything about it, right? And I think it let out a gasp. I, mean, I wasn't screaming, but I let out a gasp. And then immediately a floodlight was on my back. And I heard a uh, uh, soldier screaming at me. Oh man! He's like, 
야이 새끼야 안 돌아와 안 돌아오면 쏜다 소라 소라 is like he's like you you bastard come back here and stop stop you know or I will shoot and like at that point I'm like I'm dead anyway mm-hmm. you know like I like if I stop here I'm gonna drown and if I you know like I thought I, I yeah I thought like I was dead either way either he would shoot me or I would obey and return to the shore only to be shipped off to labor camp, right? And I decided not to stop and I kept waiting ahead. And like each step like took me further away from North Korea and closer to dream of my freedom, which is China. But the guard was kept screaming at me, but he never pulled the trigger. Hmm. And then five minutes later, because the thing was like the river was like this way, right? The current was like this way, but the current was so fast. So if I left it from here, I ended up here, right? Down, down the bank. Yeah, down, down river, like yeah. further down, right? Because like he was like keep like chasing me, and then I arrived it there, and then I went into the cornfield, corn. Like there's like a big corn farm, and I You're went in China there. now. I'm in China now, and then. Like I made it. I so, so the current took you faster than he could run. Yeah, he could run. So then you ran into yeah. a cornfield. So he, like he got lost. He got he got lost track of me. Like oh wow. Yeah, I guess the part of the reason that he didn't shoot is that he does he doesn't know where I am. Yeah, he lost. Yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't sound like compassion. It sounds like he's just like <laughs> where the hell did this guy go? Yeah, where where the hell did he go? So now you're in a cornfield, and you're running, hiding. I cut. Ca- I you know I catch my breath. And I took my old clothes and um, like, ring them out. Yeah, ring them out. Yeah, ring them out. And then like I'm just like sitting there like stunned, you know, like oh my god, I just did it. And they don't chase you into China. No, they can't. Like it's actually illegal to cross the river, even though bullet they shoot right. Mm-hmm. If the like legally on a legal term, if the bullet lands in China, that's a war. Oh yeah. Oh, so they can't shoot across the river? They so they can't shoot between in the river because that's not China, that's not North Korea. So in the between the river, you're not allowed to shoot. It's a it's a law. Mm-hmm. But North Korea doesn't care anyway. Because they shoot anyway and they kill people anyway. Yeah, so like that's what I heard, you know. That's what I heard like when I was in like a refugee camp, because a lot of people like like it's that's actually like a lot in the law, you know. Like you can't shoot the person in the between the river because that's like nobody's land. The river, no man's land. Yeah, yeah, no man's land because it's in border. But anyway, I never heard a gunshot, you know. And I'm now I'm in a cornfield. Like think about where I'm gonna go. Yeah, what's the plan now? You're just like in a hitchhike. I'm like my what my original do? plan was just living in China, you know, because I, I knew that like I couldn't get I couldn't find my dad because. Like, I know that he's far away, you know, but like my only hope, like at that time was like, okay, I'm going to find some city because I can't stay here because I found a city, but that city was like, uh, like full of like Chinese police, you know, trying to catch North Koreans, you know, so I couldn't stay there. So I have to like manage, I have to find a way to get away. So I'm walking. I don't know where I'm going. No money. No money, no food, nothing else. Only thing that I have is like almost like, uh, almost like, like faded away like shoes, you know, like almost like like I fell apart shoes, poor clothes. I'm walking, and I walked in China for three days. I didn't know where I was going, without any water or food. I was like really hungry. I was dehydrated, and I was exhausted. Like really, really, only hope that kept me going, you know, was. Finding a residential district, you know, and just just finding some water, some bread, you know, and just staying there, pretending I'm a homeless, you know, just begging for food, begging for money. And if I just live like that, I'm still free, you know, because I can do whatever whatever I want. You know, I don't have to risk my life working in a coal mine, you know, just to get paid three kilograms of, kilograms of rice, right? And then, like, finally... My feet got blisters and it started bleed. It it bled. And I can't walk anymore. I'm hungry. I'm exhausted. 
And I started regretting. Like, why did I left North Korea if I was in coma and I was still get fed? I was still a place to sleep. I was still have some money in my pocket. I was still have fun with my friend. And then I really thought about, you know, like, should I go back? Oh, man. Should I turn back? That's how bad it was. Yeah, that's how, it, how bad it was. You know, should I turn back? Because it's middle of nowhere. Like, like, it's like middle of like really nowhere. It's like nothing else but like forest. So you're in the for- you're not walking on a road. You're just I'm not walking on a road. I'm like walking in a road, but like there was a side road too. But I'm just following the road in a in a forest off to the side. Yeah, so off that nobody side. Sees nobody you. sees me, right? And you don't speak Chinese. I right? don't speak Chinese. Right, I so speak a little bit of Chinese, like broken Chinese. Broken Chinese, but this is like scary. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really scary. And then at one point, yeah. So like I don't care anymore because I'm almost dying. Like three days. It's been three days without any food. I'm dying anyways. So, I just, I just lie down, lie down on the on the road. I'm like do whatever you want, like, do, do whatever you want. And then, and then I'm I'm religious. I'm Christian. I knew I knew this was coming. I knew you were gonna say this. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but I was like, this is why he goes to yeah. church now. <laughs> yeah, I'm religious, and then I, I pray to God, cause I I met I met a pastor. When I was in China for the first time, in 2008, and he came to our house, gave me some Bible, and gave me some money. Cool, Christians give out money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really yeah. awesome. This was the, awesome. The, the first time you went to China. Yeah, right? first time in China. You were and going then, to church back then. No, I wasn't going to church, but he That's... came to our house and he uh-huh. prayed for me. Mm-hmm. And then, like when I was in like a refugee, like when I was in the uh, detention center, I prayed a lot too. Like I wasn't praying, right? I was having like communication, like mm-hmm. I was like talking. Like in my like mind, right? Talking to like, I guess God, you know. Mm-hmm. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. And then, yeah, in in China, I was so desperate, you know. And then, I was shouting, I was sh- literally like crying and shouting, like, why, you know, why? And I prayed, like, I didn't want it to die like this, you know. And I cried and cried until I became more dehydrated. I couldn't cry anymore. Huh. And then, like, like twenty, ten to twenty minutes later, a Chinese dude riding a motorcycle, and then he passed by me, and then he stops and he turns back and he comes to me, and he sees me lying down on the ground, I'm like, are you from North Korea? Oh wow! Like, you like Chaoxian? Chaoxian. Yeah, Chaoxian, right? Mm. I was like, wait, mm. no. Well, Baba is you know, like I told him, like my my, my dad is Chinese. yeah Chinese, and like and like he's like, he's like, get into a motorcycle. Wait, what? Yeah, get in, get on, get the on the motor- motorcycle. Yeah. yeah. So we wrote like a couple of hours. I don't know. I think it must be like twelve hours, and then we got to his place, and he gave me medication. He gave me food. He gave me shoes. He gave me clothes. He gave me place to sleep overnight. And the next morning, he connected me to a South Korean missionary. And then he was like, oh, like, are you trying to go to South Korea? I'm like, uh, I'm trying to find my father here. Because, like, at the time, like, I wasn't thinking of going to South Korea, right? Sure. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm looking for my father here. And it's like, oh, like, if I give you money and if I give you, like, bus ticket, do you know where to go? I was like, yeah, I know where to go. He put me on a bus to uh, my father's place. And I knew because I lived there for nine months. So I know where my father lives. And then, yeah. So do you think it's a uh, coincidence or it's a miracle? <laughs> I mean, you certainly got some good fortune having that guy pass by <laughs> right, and care enough to right. stop and help you. Yeah, and then like I knock on my father's door and then he just like freaking out like, like, to be honest, like, 16-year-old kid, you know, like, crossing, like, the the world, like, heavily fortified and most closed-up country escaping that country by himself. It's, like, impossible. Sure. You know, like, and then he thought I was a, I was a criminal. Like, did you kill someone? Like, are you on the run? You know, that's why did you escape? I'm like, no, like... 
Like, no, oh, that place sucks. Remember, yeah, that... <laughs> you used to live there. <laughs> just live there, you know. Yeah, and like, cause I was working in a coal mine, you know. I explained it, you know, and like I was just hungry, and I just wanted to live my life in freedom, you know. And then he was like, "Okay, well, that makes sense." And then I I escaped in two thousand eleven August, but two thousand ten, uh, two thousand uh, two thousand eleven October, Kim Jong Il died. The security has been gone like triple. Oh, they t- they made the security even tighter. Yeah. So like some like North Korean like a uh, military came to China to look for North Koreans, so capture them and deport back to North Korea. Right? Wow. So I couldn't move. Like I was always staying at home. You know, like, I was so scared. And then finally, my dad was like, "Okay, you know what? If you stay here and if you get caught, you know, you're gonna go to labor camp. And this time, you're gonna be eighteen. So no more, you know, like." You're going to go to four years labor camp. You know, no mercy for you. And then he found a broker that smuggles people out of China to South Korea. So I embarked on another long journey to Southeast Asia. And I was on a bus to travel to Southeast Asia. And I know how dangerous that journey is. Because I've seen a lady biting off her vein, killing herself because she got caught nearby Mongolia. And every single time the bus stops, like my heart pounding in my throat, you know, and like my palms are like sweaty and it's like, it's like full of like sweat, you know, cause like if I get caught here, I'm going to die, you know? And, and like, if the bus stops, like every single one, like every single hair on my body is sticking up, you know, cause I'm so scared. But fortunately I didn't get caught, you know? Oh man. Are you alone at this point? So I wasn't alone. There was like a couple of other North Koreans who's like, who's escaping with me. Mm-hmm. And then they, we had a broker. He's with you? I don't know who he is. You know who I am, but I don't know who you are. In case we get caught, we don't tell on you. You know, we don't know who. But he's is. on the bus? He's on the bus But too. you have no idea who I have who no he idea is. who it is, they but just you know me. The person who arranged this yeah. told you he's yeah. going to be on the bus. Yeah, he's going to be on the bus. But you won't know who he is. I don't know who it is. And there are two or three of you guys. Yeah, yeah three okay. of us. And then about a week, I finally met. So on a, we are on a bus, we're on a like motorcycle, we're on a van, you know. And then we're escaping through Southeast Asia, you know. And I got to, I got to Southeast Asia, I got to Thailand. And then we were on a boat, like a, like a really small boat, like a really narrow a boat. A boat, yeah. Okay. okay. It's like a, it's like a. It's like a, it's like a big tree, you know. Cut it in half. Like a, you're like Pontoon. in a canoe. 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 Oh, yeah, canoe. God. Okay. Yeah, we had a back there. We had a mortar, right? And it's a canoe. I know what you're. Yeah, like in Thailand, little... these little Thai boats that yeah. are hollowed out logs. Yeah. Oh, oh really? my god, you were in that thing. That's so scary. Dude. I know, right? I couldn't move, and I heard a story about like crocodiles in the river. You know. I don't know about Mac- that. Mekong Mac- River. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I'm surprised you even gave a crap about crocodiles at that point. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm I mean, like, dead, yeah. Man. And I'm after this dead. river, like, I'm free. I'm completely free, you know? And, like, I'm holding down on it, and I'm looking looking at the, the light towards the, like, th- like Thailand. I'm like, you know, if I move a little bit, we're going to flip, you know? Like, I was like, oh, my God. <sighs> you know? And then we got to Thailand, um, and then we voluntarily surrendered to um, Thailand police. So they were like, oh, like we're going to put you in a prison for 10 days. Like, I'm not going to lie. That was the best day of my life. Going to Thai prison. Going to Thai prison. Right? Wow. Waking up in a Thai prison camp. I mean, because for me, you know, I have only a certain experience, you know, because it's for me freedom. Like, I can exhale. Right. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, now I'm finally free. Thailand recognizes North Korean yeah, refugees, right? Yeah, as a refugees, right. yeah. So you're like, you know you're in good hands. Yeah, I, I know I'm in good hands, you know. And then they were sending us to um, South Korea, right? So what happened is, like, you enter Thailand without any permission. But Thailand, like, they, like, let you go wherever where they want to go because we are refugees, right? They're kicking us out of Thailand to right. South Korea, right? right? That's the understanding. Yeah, that's the understanding. So you felt life. better waking up in the Thai prison than you did waking up in that hotel in China. <laughs> well, a hundred times better. And plus, they fed us white rice and chicken soup and egg. Like, wait, what? 
Like I ate like fifty pieces of corn every meal in North Korean prison. You know, I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? This is a big step up, you know. And like they just let me sleep like however do I want. I just wake up anytime. There's food. There's water. I don't have to do anything. And what? <laughs> so this is like this is a five star resort compared yeah. to your life. <laughs> yeah. Right. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And then um. And then I was trying to apply for South Korea, but they didn't recognize me as refugee because my father is Chinese. No. Oh wow. Yeah. So they said like, Wait, oh, you're in Thailand. I'm in Thailand. You're applying for refugee status to South, to South Korea. Korea. They won't give it to you because you're only half half Chinese Korean. and half Korean. And I'm like, um, Chinese government doesn't recognize me as refugee, and they sent me back to North Korea. I know I went to live. I went to detention center. And I've been through crap. And I got sent back to North Korea. But you guys don't want to help me? And they're like, Charles, like we really want to help you, but we cannot change the law. We would have to send you back to China. I'm like, crap. Oh, my God. I'm nah. dead. Wow. You just thought you were out. I'm out. Like, and I'm now there's like... Out. Like, there is no hope for me. Because, like, resettlement was the only hope for me. Right. Because, like, I'm in Thailand. Thailand won't let you stay. Thailand, they won't let me stay. Cause, like, China will send you back. China will send me back. And now South Korea won't take you. Yeah, they won't take So I'm an international like uh, orphanage. Right. Stateless. Stateless. I, I really thought of like killing myself at the end. Did you really? I didn't eat for like a week. You know, I became like, I was like cutting, you know, I just drink water. I just like, I can't eat because I'm so stressed, you know, because like, Cause I got moved to like another cell from North Korean cell to international cell to move back to China, you know. Cause like oh, they already started the yeah, process. Yeah, they already they already started oh, the process. And, like, so you you were already like this is happening. Yeah, this is happening. I'm 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 gonna die, you know. Like and then like every day was a struggle. You know? Every day was like a war for me, you know. Cause like trying to find like South Korean like embassy like embassy like Asian, you know, like, shouting at them, you know, like please help me, you know. And, like they're just like I don't care, I don't give a crap went away but i met jesus i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you can but, uh, resist that one yeah uh but seriously though like one one guy who like recommended me like hey you should apply for un i think they know your situation well, well i think they might take you and then i apply for un and then most of people they have to wait a year to get a first interview right but for me I got my interview within a week. So who is this guy that told you to apply to the UN for international refugee status? Jesus. <laughs> so explain. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> who so, is this? Qualify that yeah. one. So he is uh, another North Korean dude okay. who is going to the United States and he's waiting to be processed. Mm -hmm. Where right? did you meet him? Uh, international, the, the international refugee camp. He's, he's there too? Yeah, he's in a same cell as me. Okay. Right? But all the people there are international. They're not just, but there's only, there's a self for only North Koreans and there is self like international people that they're going to America, you know, they're going to like, like, I know, like um, Japan, you know, uh, all over the world, mm -hmm. right? And he was like, oh yeah, you should um, apply for America. They might be, you know, accepting. They might help you out. So I applied for UN. And then I got my first interview in the first week, second interview in the second week, third week, fourth week. I went to hospital. I got my body checked out. Everything's good. And then you're going to go to America. Wow. How did that happen so quickly? Because I was a minor at the time. How did was, you fill out the paperwork? I don't even understand. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm just there, was a, there was like a Korean, you know, like a translator helped me out. He worked at the prison? No, 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 no. He, uh, he's working for, she's working for UN. A UN worker helped you. Yeah, apply. Helped me. Yeah, apply for the. The day that I got my plane ticket, I could not sleep. I was so excited, you know, like all the things that I can do, right? All the things that I, how I'm gonna live. Like I'm trying to map out, you know, how I'm gonna live, you know, my rest of my life. You know, like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna live my life so good. You know, I'm gonna be really good. I'm gonna become rich. I'm going to help out and I'm going to do like old things and I'm going to go to church. Like my thoughts are like full of like, like plans, you know, like, and at the same time, I'm so excited, you know, like I couldn't sleep. 
for but the at, whole day. Until that point, you didn't plan to go to America. I, I didn't know, like, I didn't know, like, I mean, I knew about America, but, like, I didn't even, like, imagine going there because, you know, it's such a foreign country. You know, it's such a foreign to me. South Korea was only, like, my like, option, you know, but, like, even better. Way better. I'm like, and then, like, yeah, so uh, I didn't know about America. I mean, like, I, I knew about America, but, like, I didn't think of coming to America. You know, it's like. Imagine you think you're going to die in a North Korean labor camp and you end up in Los Angeles instead. Yeah. That, it's blowing my mind. Yeah. yeah. So you you get on the plane. Did you fly from Thailand? Yeah, from Thailand to South Korea. And I remember looking. Oh, you went from Thailand, South Korea? South Korea. South Korea. To, to Los Angeles. To Los Angeles. Or, or LAX. Did you know anybody here? Uh, no. <laughs> What was your plan? So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, IRS, so International Refugee, like, International Refugee Service. Mm -hmm. So they had, uh, people. Much friendlier than the I was about IRS. to say. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know the IRS helped refugees get settled. A different International Refugee Service. Yeah. I, I think it's IRS. I, I might have, um, looked that up, but it's like, a, what's IRS? It's our internal revenue service. They take that. You'll, you'll learn all about them now that you're paying taxes. Oh, IRS, the tax, yeah, sir, yeah, yeah tax yeah. collectors, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just to file a tax. Not as helpful as the ones that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, but there's not under like a service. Um, is it a nonprofit? It's really big. Is it? It's really big nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah, it's like a UN. Like an NGO. Yeah, NGO. Yeah, yeah. It's really big. They help refugees get settled in different places. Yeah. So they knew about your case. Yeah, they knew about my. How case. did they know? Did you did you write them? Yeah. So I told them everything about like I told them every specific like I told them so okay so if you go to China this jail you'll find about my paper, you'll find everything about me. If you go to this North Korean location. You'll find everything about me. And then I guess they have connections. Are they part of the process of getting a visa to go? That was, I mean, like that was interview. That was interview, right? That's all part of it. All part of it. Okay. Right. To like accepting me as a refugee, right? So they have to make sure that I'm like, I'm like, like identified. You know? Yeah. And I'm you're not a, a criminal. Yeah, I'm not a criminal. Right. I'm not a I'm not a. You're I'm, not. You're not part of a group, a yeah, terrorist group, like a or terrorist some group yeah. or part of like any like organization. You know, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was your first plane ride like? You know, I remember looking out the window as the plane began to land in California. You know, I've never dreamed of being on a plane, or like even coming to America. You know, it's like I'm so high up. You know, I was so terrified of like turbulence. You know, I'm like when's the plane shake? <laughs> You know, I was yeah. like, all the plane rides, but like, I got used to it because like, I worked for like 16 hours or something like that mm -hmm. from Thailand to Southeast Asia, uh, South Korea, and South Korea to here. You know, it's took like, so I got used to it, you know. And how about um, that airplane food, huh? Are you like, I'm going back to the coal mine? This yeah, it's terrible. like, this is terrible. Like, healthy food? Like, what is this? Like, give me that Thai prison food. Yeah, yeah. Thai where's prison? that Thai prison food? <laughs> Oh, like the vegetables and like a brown rice. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what? <laughs> You're not even in I America left North yet. Korea because I hate this food. And like, give me this. <laughs> yeah. Give me some good stuff, you know, <laughs> like an oily, you know, like a dripping oil. That's stuff. right. Like, like the Panda in and out we had you know, like, Panda Express. Like, you know, like dripping with like oils, you know, like dripping with like fat, you know. <laughs> oh, I know. Um, but yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, I. I didn't even like imagine bringing a plane or even coming to America, you know. And like as I step up the plane, I felt these strange feelings that I haven't known before. You know, it's safety. Like I was finally safe and didn't need to hide anymore. What does safety feel like? Like if you could describe it, how would you describe it? Like feelings that are relaxed. You know, like every single part of your body muscles you know it's like relaxed you know and like you can breathe you know like you can breathe the air you know i used to breathe fe like fear you know i used to breathe like fear in china because every single breath that i'm taking is a fear because i'm afraid of like getting caught and afraid of being you know bitten you know afraid of being taken away you know but finally like breathing air like a normal air right 
And I could feel that. I could feel like like a safety in the air. You know what I mean? Like 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 I don't need to hide anymore. You know, I don't need to be afraid of like government anymore. I don't need to be afraid of something. You know, I don't need to fear anything because I'm 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 protected, you know? What was the first I mean immigrating from another country is hard, but you're basically immigrating to the 21st century from North Korea. Yeah. I mean, it's like time warp. Yeah, right. So for me, it was like, yeah, getting into, getting into like time machine, you know, because like, like a lot of North Koreans say this, you know, getting into like time machine, you know, mm. fast forwarding like 50 years, 70 years, you know, where is like there's technology, there is like phone, there is computer, there is touch screen, there is like, there's a drone, you know, there's like camera and you know, everything like, and it's, it's really unique experience. Like it's, it's just mind blowing, you know, it's just mind blowing experience to have all those kind of like technology in my hand, you know, and I don't know what to do with it. You know, like, is this like eating thing? Is it food? Is this like a something that you wear? You know, is this something that like you do something with it? You know, I don't know what I'm doing with it. But the most thing that I uh, I did, like I had a first smartphone in 2012. As soon as I got here, I got my smartphone, Samsung Galaxy S2, I think. Yeah. And then I remember looking through that phone, you know, it's so like, it's a small TV, you know, it's, it's a small television. And it has more than one channel. Yeah, more than one channel. It's like a 24 hour, you know, like it has a YouTube, you know. And yeah, in North Korea, we only have like a one channel, which is like educational broadcasting, you know, like a brainwashed propaganda, you know. But like more than one channel, like. I was so distracted, like watching, like I'm like a kid, you know, I'm like five years old kid. Watching know? every Will Smith clip. Yeah, every, yeah, every <laughs> yeah. watching Will Smith clips, you know, and like watching all those Family Guy, you know, <laughs> watching the Rick and Morty, you know, Rick and Morty, I was like, my Family Guy, American Dad, do you know? It's my wife's favorite. American Dad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, what, like... I know you had seen movies, yeah. but I'm sure a lot of that was new. Yeah. Was that, did you understand it? I didn't understand anything. Okay. But I just like the main characters, right? Characters, like how they act, you know, and um, I didn't understand like anything like two years later, you know? And then like, I could speak, you know? And then Oh I yeah, speak. because you didn't speak English at that point. I didn't speak any, like only thing that I could say was like, thank you, you know? And like two years later, like, like my ear was like opening, you know. Like my ear was like, like I can understand you, you know. Like it's it's a magical moment, and then like somehow like I'm not afraid to like speak anymore, cause like I was always shy, you know. Like if I try to speak something, like my face turned red, you know. I couldn't like say anything, mm -hmm. but like I understand like a better, you know. And like movies like became like my friend. You know, because like, like I understand, and then like it's somehow I turned it into like um, um, like what do you call the people with like this communicating with like a device like just only on the computer like keyboard heroes like what I don't know keyboard jockey I don't know <laughs> geek like, I don't know. You, he just only you're only communicating online. No, I mean, like, I'm just, just watching you know, TV all day, you know. Oh, yeah. Couch potato. <laughs> Couch potato. <laughs> but, yeah, I was in high school. So, I was, like, every, like, after school, I've done homework. I just, like, sitting on a TV, you know, all day. I think that's how I learned English. So, you, went, so to you went to high school? school? Yeah, I went, to, yeah, I went, to, yeah, so I went to high school. So, you know, funny thing is, so I arrived in 2000, uh, September 21st, 2012, and I went to high school that right next day. <laughs> The next day? Right wow. next day. Yeah. Wow. Wait, you landed in LA though, right? No, I landed in LA and then I I um I was on like like JetBlue or something and mm -hmm. then I went to SAC, San Jose Airport. You went to Nor Northern, Northern California. California. Yeah, so I, I resettled in NorCal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. NorCal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they just put you in high school, like he'll be fine. He doesn't speak English. Who put He's you been there? homeless working yeah. in a coal mine. Yeah. Wait, you I, I dodged the bullet, you know, and and just escape twice from yeah, the most repressive from regime. Yeah, Wait, regime. so you drop it. How old are you at this point? I was 17 and like 
like American age, I was like 17 and 11 months old. So almost 18. Almost 18. Yeah. And then you went to an American high school yeah. the day after you landed. Yeah. You don't speak English. I don't speak any English. What is that like? It was chaos. I don't, I don't know anything. Like I'm like, I got to survive this. You know, this is another whole different level of like stress I need to deal with. You know? A whole nother level. What are yeah. you talking about? You come from a labor camp and chemistry class is freaking you out? <laughs> I don't understand anything. Like I, I, got, I have to get this. Like I, I need to understand. You know, I need to write down everything what they're saying, but I don't know anything. Oh like, my god! I mean, can you even write in English? No. Did anyone know that at the school? No. I mean, like. So how did I, you? I mean, they knew that I couldn't speak any English. They knew that I couldn't write anything. But like, they put me in an ESL class, right? But I'm going to school with like like freshman kids. I was almost 18. There's a 14 years old kid just sitting right next to me talking something about something, something, something. I don't understand anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah. I don't understand anything. Well, Does anybody know that you came from North Korea? They didn't know. Only principal and a couple of teachers knew that I was from North Korea, but they helped me a lot. Like, they were keep like helping me, you know, helping with math, you know, they're helping with English. But it was, it was really tough. It was really, really tough. It was even even tougher than like I guess in a certain extent. I was tougher than working in a coal mine. Because like I don't American understand. high school is tougher than working in a North Korean coal, coal mine. mine. Yeah, because I don't understand <laughs> There's a quote for the episode. I mean, wow. <laughs> but in a way, I can I can understand that because you don't speak the language. Yeah, I don't probably speak the same language. You don't... I don't know the culture. You know, I don't know like because I grad. I I'm a I'm a elementary dropout in North Korea. Yeah, I didn't go to school at all. And so even you... if you did, you'd know about like Kim Jong Il and yeah, not a whole lot more. I don't know anything about history. You know, but I learned that. America dropped a bomb on Hiroshima in, in Japan, and that's how they surrendered. But how I learned in North Korea is that Kim Il-sung fought the head-to-toe armed Japanese soldier, Japanese, like, crap ton of, like, army. And uh, Kim, Kim Il-sung came in, and he beat the crap, crap out of them and just, like, kicked them out from North Korea, and they freed us from, like, Japanese, right? Wait, they taught you that Kim Il-sung was responsible for ending World War II? Yes. Not just the Korean War, but... Not just Korean War, but winning the Japanese, you know, right. kicking the Japanese out of, like, North Korea. Are there other historical... Like, are there other versions of history that you remember learning about in the States that you were just like, oh, my God, what I was told was completely wrong? Do you remember any of those moments? Like, for example, like, Kim Jong-il, you know, Kim Il-sung fighting Jap Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. Like, kicking them off from... North Korea, that's like, that's how he fought. You know, it's a fought off Japanese, right? Head to toe armed. Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung winning the war, Korean war. Korean war, yeah. It's ceasefire. It's never ended, you know? And Kim Jong, I think Kim Il-sung like kind of lost the war, you know? But he doesn't tell us he lost. He prevented America invading North Korea, you know? That's the two things, like the major. Those are the two moment. big moments, yeah, and they both have to do with Kim Il Sung. Yeah, they yeah. both yeah. have to do with Kim Il Sung. Right. So I'm like, what? What surprised you most about Americans after you thought we were all werewolves and evil, and then you end up in like San Jose High School? They're kind. They're so kind, like, like caring, you know, because like they all helped me. You know, my social worker was um like white lady she um she was like she was in like late 20s you know and then she would always be kind to me you know and i was so surprised you know like like she was like really nice to me you know i didn't ex I, w I thought I, like i would expect like they being like so like stubborn you know they being like so like violence you know but like they're so kind you know yeah There's so much. <laughs> That's great. And it's just like I was just taking that in. We never talked about that kid who stole your shoes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, going back to that point. So I met. That's not a kid actually. He's like in his like mid thirties. Oh. Okay. Right? Uh, at the time, and he stole my shoes in the detention center, and he I don't know what happened from then, right? Because he stole my shoes, and then he went off. I was working in a um detention center for a while. And then I met him in Thailand, the prison camp. Did he have your stinking shoes? Hey, where are your <laughs> shoes at, man? 
No, it's been like yeah. two years later, so he doesn't have. He has like a better shoes, right? You should have stolen his shoes, right? I know. I was gonna do that, and then like, and then so um, I was a new recruit, right? So right after the next day, I arrived in Thailand. They they put me in a truck and they drove me to a local like a prison camp, right? And then I was like, we we're all like you know searched up, you know, make sure we don't have any drugs or anything else. And then we were all searched up, and then we went into like with handcuffed, right? And then we went into the prison cell, and then that when we entered the prison cell, they uh they uncuffed us, and they oh sorry, we don't have handcuffed, but we have like a leg, uh, leg irons, yeah, yeah, leg irons. Mm-hmm. But I see this dude is looking so familiar, but he's not Korean. He's speaking Korean, right? He looks so familiar. I was like. I think I've seen you somewhere. And then, oh my god, it's the dude, but he doesn't remember me. I was like, I saw you at the at the Chongjin like the detention center, and you took my shoes, <laughs> and now he remembers it. I was like, oh my god, thank you so much for your shoes. Because of the shoes, I could escape. And then he tell he's telling me this story, right? So he stole my shoes. And then he was on a train with these two police officers who's like uh, transporting him. And then he tells me that also like when I was like when I was in interrogation like an in office, I swallowed a paperclip. And then he went to the bathroom like a couple of days later and he flipped it out. And then he kept the paperclip right. And then like he he kept it in under the tongue while he was like transporting it. And then he he took it out and he uncut un. He picked the yeah, handcuffs. Yeah. yeah, he picked the handcuffs, and then he's running through the tr- like in between the trains. But the train was moving, right? So all the doors are closed, and then all the windows were closed too, right? So he's so like as soon as like he got away, like maybe like a couple of like feet, and then the the guards realized he's gone, and then he's chasing him, right? He's like chasing him, and he's seeing all those windows like closed, and the doors closed too. But he sees one window that are that are like open, and then he's running through that window, and then he's just like, whoosh, you know, he dove out the window. Yeah, he dove out the window. I don't know how fast the train is going, and I don't like he's explaining how the like train was going pretty slow. Wow! And then he just dive out out of the train, and he rolls in like a, in a in a like a. Like a like a rocky, ah, yeah. And then he walk for a couple of like days, and then he get back to China, and then he working in China for a while. He saved enough money. He bought a broker, and then he now he he's on a journey to South Korea, and then that's how he met me. And then he took cause like he was really old and he has some money. I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything in Thailand, so like. He was with me about like a month and a half. I was staying in Thailand for like eight months, but he was with me for the first month and a half. Within that month and a half, he paid for everything. Like he bought me food, he bought me snack, he bought me cigarette, he bought me like everything, you know, because like he's like, yeah, because of your shoes. And like, it's like a meeting a, like a hometown person. You know, mm-hmm. It feels really good because you know that person from North Korea, right? And then, like meeting him, like it's like, it's like what? Yeah, how random! That is it's such like, a weird coincidence, right? It's like the world's so small. Yeah. Life is so crazy. It is so That's crazy. So wild. So, actually, yeah. Uh, you still I, keep in touch with him? No, uh, actually, I lost contact with him when he got to South Korea. Mm. He gave me like one number to call, but like I, he doesn't pick it up. So I must hmm. think he changed his number or something. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember his name? Yeah, I do remember his name. You want to just say it? Maybe he'll email us. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, got it. Maybe not. It's a how long family you... to protect. So uh, sure, yeah. I understand. How long have you been in America? It's been six years now. And I assume do you do you think you'll stay here for re- for the rest of my life? Yeah, I got my citizenship right, so I'm just gonna be here. Yeah. This might be a weird question, but. Is there anything about North Korea that you miss? I do actually. I do have like I have a lot of things that I miss about North Korea. Like North Korea, it's like 
it's like clean land, you know. It's it's not exposed by a mankind, by humankind, you know. So it's very, very like original, right? It's like it's not developed, pristine. You know? Yeah, like a yeah, like a clean, you know.、Mm-hmm. The nature is beautiful, you know. The water, you know, the air is fresh, and of course, my friends, you know, and like on a, during summer in during hot day, you know, I go out to like a river, you know, you know, like a, I smell gra- grass, you know, and like smelling the river, just swimming in there, you know, the water is like delicious. Even the like river, the water is delicious. And you know, like a lot of people think think that like North Korean people are brainwashed, trying to kill everyone, trying to kill America, trying、uh, trying to like have war with Americans, you know. But actually, that's not true, you know. I mean, like a lot of young millennials, you know, like us, you know, they know about you know America, they know about South Korea, they know about capitalism, you know. So it's not like that. You know, it's not like, and I know that a lot of people think that North Korean people are starving to death, like most of them. But that's actually not true either. Some rich, like North Korean high government officials, they live like better than like middle class American does. You know, they have a lot of money. They're so rich. People who have connections with like governments, you know, they are rich. They can do whatever they want. They can kill someone and they can buy their way out. You know. What did you tell me earlier at Starbucks about people who are fat and bald? Oh yeah, right, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, like no offense, but people who coming from North Korea, right? I, you know, when I came here, like culture shock was like people who is really like people who are rich, they're skinny. People who are poor, they're fat. Like, I mean, I didn't understand like how is that possible? You know. Like, like people who's rich shouldn't you be fat, and like people who's poor shouldn't you be skinny because you cannot eat really well, and you know in North Korea, if fat people, if you go, it's the opposite. No offense, but if you go to North Korea, you're gonna be just famous as Kim Jong Un, you know, <laughs> because I'm so fat. Yeah, because you're so fat, you're bold, you know, and North Korean I'm people. I'm not bold.、Though. Yeah, yeah, you're not bold. But, yeah, that's so weird. Like in America, it's the opposite, right? Yeah, it's the opposite, right? But North Korean people, like, if you go to North Korea, right, and people are starving, right? So they they don't have big tummy, and people who is bald, like that indicates like you have like you have you're educated, right? And you have like high class. I learned so much. All my hair fell out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, North Korean people like they think that if you have a big big like belly and like a like a bald hair like bald head. They think you're working for government, right? You're a government official, so like, you get like free bow, free bows. People have to bow to you. Free bows, yeah. If you're bald, yeah. If you're bald, because like they like think that oh, like he's he's a government official, official, right? Government, like he's working for the government, right? right. So he comes to you and he just. They have to bow to you. Yeah. Are there other things about life in America that you're still adjusting to, or that don't make sense? I mean, like I'm still adjusting to like a racism, you know. Adjusting to racism. Yeah, like, like you know, like I didn't know about the racism at all. You know, I does I I just thought there's only yellow, you know. But there yeah, you didn't know there were other. Yeah, I didn't know there was other colors. You know, like a white, yellow, like black. You know, but I'm still learning that, and I'm still adjusting it. You know, and I'm still like there's, it's not the culture. It's it's about like 257 other cultures that are, you know, all together, right? And I'm still learning about the capitalism, you know, and like I, you know, I learned that like capitalism, capitalism is not, is not friendly, you know. It's, it's always not friendly. It's not friendly, you know. People always trying to make money off of you, you know. People trying to like take advantage of you, you know. If you are, if you don't speak any language, if you're not smart, they try to take a try. They try to take like advantage of you, you know. That's That happened like so many times to me. Oh, how does that show up? Like, when does that happen to you? So, uh, when I was in, uh, when I was in school, you know, I w- really wanted to get a car. You know,、mm-hmm. I really wanted to get a car. So, uh, I had a、uh, two thousand dollars in my hand. I worked my butt off to make the money. 
And then I walked into a car dealership. I have 2,000 bucks. What kind of car can I get? This guy comes out with an Audi car key. Audi car key, right? Okay, yeah, drive it. Test it. I have a, I have a, I don't even have a driver's license. I have a permit, right? Oh, you have a learner's permit? Okay. Yeah, right? And then I had a permit. And then I hand it to him and like, oh yeah, sure. There you go. And then I test drive, test drive the car. It's so nice, you know, that goes like crazy fast. And I'm like, I'll take it. How much is it? And he's like, don't worry about it. Just give me your money and we'll just get you the car, okay? And then, yeah, sure. And then this guy's like, used my credit, right? Credit to like apply for the credit, like mm -hmm. a loan from the bank. So they sold me as like $1,300,000. Wait, $13,000? Oh, sorry, $13,000. Yeah, yeah. And then this car, it was, it was overheated once. This car engine is almost dying. Wait, so they, they sold you the car? They sold me the car. For only 2000 down or something? Yeah, only $2,000 down. So I have 11 to go. Okay. Right? That yeah. guy should be... That's, that's like ridiculous. Insane. That, like, that's unbelievable. Right? Yeah. And then I bought the car. And from that day, the engine oil is leaking. Right? Engine oil is leaking. And it gives me a problem every single day for the next, like, six months. And I drove 9,000 miles. And then the car blew off. Oh, my gosh. Right? Sold you a lemon. Yeah, I sold a lemon car, right? And I still have like like eleven thousand dollars to go on a bank. And then the car completely blew off. Yeah, that sucks. So I went to the dealership and like, hey, look, wait, what's happening? And he's like, Yeah, you signed the paper, you have everything. Like I can't do anything for you because this you signed it and apparently you bought the car as it is. So uh, we can't do anything for you. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm screwed. Um, and then I'm like, I have to have a car because like I wanted to drive left, you know, and I wanted to like, I have to go to work. I have to go to school at the same time. So I went to like, okay, so I'm not going to go to like small dealership. I'm going to go to big dealership. And also they will give me a good car. Mm -hmm. And then I had another $3,000 in my hand. So I wanted to buy a used car in the big dealership, right? I walk into the door in a Honda dealership in Conquer. He's super friendly. Yeah, so, like, he's super friendly. He's like, okay, you know, like, like yeah, he's like, he have a big smile on his face. You know, he's super friendly. And then he's like, are you buying any cars? You know, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for a car, you know, to buy here. And he's like, yeah, come on in, you know, like, he's like. Bend over in the table, you know. It's like, it's <laughs> yeah. like, come on in, you know. You're welcome. You're always welcome, you know. I'm looking for a a person like you to, you know, screw over, you know. And then he sold me a car, Honda Civic, 2015 Honda Civic. So um, I had the eight thousand dollars on the Audi A4, and then this guy sold me that car for twenty one thousand dollars in a maximum interest. So you could have purchased as a fourteen thousand dollars, but yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, fourteen thousand dollars. But this guy's like, oh yeah, this is a kid, you know, like he doesn't know anything. So like, let me fuck you over, you know. Mm -hmm. like, he's like, so plus the eight thousand dollars, twenty one thousand dollars plus tax plus eight thousand dollars. So I got almost like twenty nine thousand dollars for a Honda Civic, two thousand fifteen Honda Civic. Wow. And then um, I had to pay, like, a lot of, you know, so I learned, like, really big mistake. I, I made, like, yeah, I well, made a lot of big mistakes, you know, and I had to learn that this is not something that, you know, friendly, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to, you know. That must be hard. It was really hard, you know, it was really, really hard. After everything you've been through. <laughs> Yeah. Then you get screwed over by, like, yeah. two used Some car salesmen. Yeah, yeah, the worst kind of humans. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I have to, you know, really, really learn, you know, learn from my mistakes. And then, uh, yeah. And, you know, capitalism is really you know, not friendly, you know. And, um, like, one thing that, one thing that, you know, like, I learned in this, you know, society, it's like, why people just have empathy? 
you know why people don't, don't why why do people not have empathy yeah empathy mm-hmm. for each other you mm-hmm. know like if you're rich like i don't care if you're rich i don't care about you why should i care about you you know like do you think there was more empathy in north korea i i yeah because like i mean you know i mean like I guess within my friends, you know, fellow friends, you know, like, and even though if we are starving, we're starving all together, right? And if we are struggling, we're struggling all together. You know, we're in a one boat, but like in here, like everyone is like different levels of like, you know, so it's really hard. Yeah. And most people here, I imagine, can't begin to understand what you've been through uniquely. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I... You know, I believe that you know, this is land of opportunity, right? There is still hope. There is a lot of good things about, you know, all the things. So if I work hard, you know, work smart, you know, I think I can achieve my dreams, you know, whatever I have. And, you know, like everything that I do, I do it with like hope, you know, excitement. You know, I don't, I mean, yeah, I've been through a lot. You know, so what? I mean, I don't live in the past. I live in present, you know, so, you know. Today, like, let's make it today the best. You know, why not? You know, so yesterday happened. What can I do? Learn from it. Don't do it again. You know, and just look forward. You know, keep going. You know, keep just walking. You know, and you'll be fine. Do you think you had to learn how to become that way? Or are you just that way by nature? Yeah, I'm just that way. You're just that way. my, My personality is like just that way. Yeah. If you weren't that way, it would have been harder. It would have, to... yeah, it would have been harder. Like I, I wouldn't know like which place I would end up today if I wasn't like that. You know, like I can't imagine. You know, I will probably working in a coal mine. I'll probably that for now. <laughs> I want to end on something a little lighter. You know, first of all, well, maybe this isn't lighter, but how come when we went to North Korea, people on the subway and things like that, they move away from us. Ah, nobody will talk to us. People won't look at us. Some people will look at us like out of the corner of their eye, but there was very little interaction aside from hotel staff and things like that. Yeah, like I'm not sure about that because like I've never told, you know, there is like American people visiting North Korea, you know. The only thing that I've learned and only thing that I've heard was like, like foreign country people coming to North Korea to praise Kim Jong Il, you know, because his like leadership is so great, you know. So they come to perform in his birthday party, you know, like uh, Kim Il Sung's birthday party, you know. And I'm not sure why is that, like, and I never knew about that either. Like when I was in North Korea, I've never heard about like people visiting, you know, people all over the country like paying like twenty five hundred dollar every week just to stay like in North Korea. Jordan and I actually had a question for you about that. Yeah. So he and I have been to North Korea several times. The first time we went, we went purely out of curiosity. And then we both ended up kind of getting hired to lead tourists there. But I think we kept going because we wanted to understand Mm -hmm. North Korea better. Mm. Because it's really hard to understand it if you just watch the news and we were just curious and, you know, wanted to travel. And I, Jordan and I have talked about this a bunch over the years. Those trips opened our eyes to a very different way of life. And I think we both feel very lucky to have seen another part of the world and get to know people from a country we wouldn't get to meet. Mm. But there are a lot of people who, when we talk about it or when they l- find out that we've been there, don't think it's okay that we went to North Korea. Mm. And I kind of under, I can appreciate that perspective because they think that if you go to North Korea, you have to pay to be there you're supporting the government, the government that does a lot of terrible things. And it always comes down to, is the cost of tourism worth the the learning opportunity? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. From your perspective, do you think tourism to North Korea is a positive or a negative? In a way, I see that this is, like tourism to North Korea is, is I have pros and cons, right? Because like you get to see like the beauty of North Korea, right? Beauty of like, like at least like air and water, right? But everything, the pro is, pro is like, 
you see a North Korea, right? A developed North Korea, you know, because like everything that you see within that range is what they want you to see, sure. right? Because yeah. like everything that, even though you talk to like people on the street, you know, they were educated, they were like brainwashed, and they have things that they have to say to you, right? And even though they say, like, oh, like we need help. Do you speak Korean? You don't. You have a translator between you and the guy, right? You and the pedestrian. So whatever you talk to them, whatever you talk, whatever they talk to you, it's been translated by the government, right? So you don't get to know the true North Korea by just going through North Korea with government, right? right? Because right. like you're only limited to limited to like the resources and limited to like things that you are you are you are seeing sure yeah. right but if you want to make it you want to go into north korea through the border i mean like through the way that i came out like if you want to go there i'm, like, I'm gonna pass on that <laughs> i'm gonna definitely not gonna go <laughs> in lieu of sneaking into north korea I mean, you're right. You don't you don't get to see the real North Korea yeah, because you don't get to see all of it. All of it. But right? I guess my question is, is it still worth it for people to go? It's not worth it. You don't think it's worth it's it? It's not worth it. Okay. It's, uh, you know, but I don't think it's really worth it because you're just supporting North Korean government, you know, because that money is going into building a nuclear weapon. You know, that money is still going into like, you know, building nuclear weapons, you know, building the bullets, you know, making the bullets that are going to kill North Korean people, you know, so it's not really. Worth so to it. you, even though the, the, the dollar amount is low, very low, I mean, it's not, it's almost nothing to you. It's still contributing to, North Korea to something regime. really terrible, Yeah, something really terrible mm -hmm. because yeah. So uh, I don't think it's worth it mm -hmm. instead of you going into North Korea, right. To see what's happening. How about you spend that money to find North Korean refugees that are here, right? Listen to their stories, find organizations that who supports people, supports North Korean refugees that are trying to escape from China to South Korea. How about you help them? How about you read their stories, right? And then how about you just help them getting out of North Korea, mm -hmm. right? Getting out of China. I think that's something that way much more worth than going into North Korea. And I personally believe that working with North Korean refugees to, you know, changing North Korea, I think it's way worth it because North Korean like refugees plays really, really big role on this huge issues, right? Because people who comes out from North Korea, they have still have connection back in North Korea. They sending like tremendous money back into North Korea, like per year. Fifteen million dollars are going into North Korea, right? That money is not going into any government. That money is not going into any part of like nuclear weapons. That money is truly going into like North Korea. You know that money are used by people, right? And they are making like markets better, right? And helping that refugee getting to know them a little bit better, right? Getting to know them and helping them, I think that's the way that we can truly get to see north korea you know because unification when unification happened i'll take you there don't worry i'll take you there you know and i believe that i personally believe that north korea and south korea would be unified in my lifetime reunified, reunified. you think it's going to happen yeah well we might take you up on that if i would gonna go to. back i would yeah, go percent. back yeah but only I'll, after. I'll take you to my hometown and yeah. you know i'll just but let's not go you know until Gim's regime crumbles. I'm not going until yeah. that happens. No, no, I think you. I think we've <laughs> decided for yeah. sure. I think we have made that very dangerous for ourselves. How do people date in North Korea? Like, how do you meet women and stuff like that? You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like dating is free. You know, like it's not like government's like dating is like really free in North Korea. Yeah, like, you just go to a chestnut farm, man. Chest it's all <laughs> chestnut about the chestnut farm. farm yeah, it's all man. about the chestnut farm, you know. I, gonna... I remember I asked one of our tour guides where, where she meets guys, and she goes, she looked at me like I was dumb as hell, and she goes, at the library. Why? Where do you meet people? <laughs> like, library. <laughs> one, of our, one of our other guides said that he meets people on the intranet. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, on the, like when he's playing Counter-Strike. He's stuff. playing like some very low-res version of... Yeah, some game. And he or said something. he chats with girls online. I don't know about that. I mean, you I think mean, he was like, just lying? <laughs> I mean, like there is like an internet, 
I'd say Micronet, right? Mm-hmm. Internet, Micronet. Yeah, existing in North Korea, right? But I don't think that guy's just BSing, you know? like You can't chat with other people on that. Like, within the college, you know, they're allowed to use the internet and it's to, like, you know, within, like, schools, like, certain, like, areas. But, yeah, I don't think... <laughs> he was a little bit nutty, yeah, he so was it's totally crazy. possible. But anyway, but go back to, to dating. Tell yeah, us, yeah, How yeah. does that work? Yeah, dating is, like, you just... It's normal. It's like just like here, you know, like, oh, if you like me, buy me something, you know. But that's guys are playing that role. You know, girls doesn't get to play that role. So, back in so what's a date? What does a date look like in North Korea? Um, They look like you just walk, you know, because like there's a lot of like really fun things to do in North Korea, too. You know, there's actually a park in North Korea. So. Sounds like a freaking blast. Yeah. <laughs> do you mean like a pub, like a park like with benches and trees? And yeah, stuff? benches and okay. pre- trees. Keep you know? selling it. Yeah. There's, there's also like, was there a, like a fun, what do you call it, fun fair? Like an amusement, amusement park? park? Amusement park, yeah. There is like amusement park that you can go to, mm-hmm. but it's really expensive and poor people can't afford it, but rich people can't afford it. So they just go to there and just hang out. It's a, it's a lot similar to here, you know, because like North Korean millennials, they've been watching so much South Korean dramas and so much foreign media so like their mentality is changing oh what is that what's, level can you explain what that means like they watch they watch a drama yeah so it's and then how drama. does that affect the way they date because like because like past like 20 years or so right um so a lot of like there's like north korean like millennials right who grew up after the famine happened, the famine right mm-hmm. after that happened like there's a lot of like foreign media is going into North Korea, right? Because like South Korean dramas and people like, at first they didn't believe, right? Oh, this is just a setup. You know, this is like, they're trying to brainwash us. But like, as they keep watching it, right? And like, wait, it's just a normal life. You know, the love story, you know? And there is like, they don't just see the people in the people that are in the movie, right? Their main, they don't just see the main actors. We see people that are in background too. Mm-hmm. We watch a lot of backgrounds too. Right. And like, that's not setting. That's right, so you're not just looking at the people who are talking. You're looking and you're like, wow, there's a lot of cars. Yeah, there what are a lot, lot of cars. There's yeah. a lot of buildings. buildings yeah, right. There's a lot of like fancy things. There's fancy tree, fancy road. And they kind of trying to copy that. You know, There's a lot of trendy things that are in North Korea by like South Korean dramas too. You know? But who's copying? They're copying the... But like a fashion, like uh, fashion okay. Like the way like people style, dress, yeah. yeah. With, with dresses, you know, way people talk, you know, that, that's they have copy it. And like within, like among the friends, like we try to like, like copy, imitate, like the South Korean accents, mm-hmm. you know, like hey, you know, like ah, 잘 지냈어, oh, 뭐잘 지냈어, you know, like oh, 너 오늘 뭐해, you know, like yeah, something like that, you know, like what you doing, you know, like how are you doing, you know. I, I think that's Korean for what's up, <laughs> yeah, what's, what's up with you, yeah, man, yeah. 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 It's Something more like that. So yeah. you you, ca- you copy the slang and the style. Yeah, I copy and then, the slang right. and the styles and like the way they date, you know, because like there's a. What does that mean? Like South Korean dramas, it's all about love stories, mm-hmm. right? Like rich, uh, like the rich guy meets like a poor like girl, you know, how to like hook up, you know, like. Yeah, I think like that's. So do you think it makes that, does it make young people in North Korea more uh, ambitious or more aggressive, like more willing to talk to people or. They want to have their own love stories. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So okay. they're like social media is changing North Korea's like perspectives, right? Lower like people's mind like slowly, you know, changing in a way that like to like capitalism, you know, like to like have like their own stories. You know, they can write their own stories like besides like what government tells you to write, mm-hmm. right? It sounds like that's the main difference in the new generation. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on like now we have like cell phones too in north korea so i'm like what like there's like north korean like average person's like income is 1500 per year 1500 per year US dollars you mean dollars? yeah yes dollars right sorry <laughs> yes like yes 1500 dollars per year but the cell phone just the per cell phone is like 700 bucks yes dollars wow wow oh, so half yeah basically like how can you afford that Right. Like who's a friend? Right. So Charles, as we wrap here, we've been we've gone like three episodes long or something like that. But people want to know what you're doing now. I, I found it surprising to hear that you had 
a job in IT. I thought that was kind of unusual. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I went to a coding boot camp called uh, Coding Dojo in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And uh, I learned to code. You know,、um, I learned to build a website with like like website using like many different like like languages, like such as like Python,、um, like JavaScript. You know, MinStack. You know, and、um, yeah. So、uh, now I'm looking to like looking for a job as a software developer. But、uh, I mean, at the side, like I'm doing like a advocacy intern in a at a Liberty North Korea uh, NGO, uh, and、um, yeah. But、uh, after that, you know, I'm really really looking forward to like have all my business, you know, in a coding school, you know, where I teach like North Korean people how to code, you know, and、uh, like teaching them like American cultures, American language, and plus like American, you know. Uh, job, you know, well-paying job. Sure. Yeah, that's my ultimate dream. But for now, I really wish to find a job as a software developer. <laughs> Can you imagine coming from a place where you're working in a coal mine that doesn't even have automated diesel steam car, whatever carts, and now、yeah. you're like, oh yeah, we need you to code something up for iOS real quick,、yeah. right? <laughs> Bust out some Python. Yeah. yeah get this、right. thing open. I want you to build a website. I want you to build that AI that can. Communicate with people. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure me, thing. Me, I got you. You know, your tech at home was a TV with、yeah. one channel, and、yeah. now you're coding. Yeah, now I'm like coding for, coding for food. You know, <laughs> coding for food. We'll、yeah. code for food. Yeah, I'll code for food, <laughs> especially in an app breaker. <laughs> in an app. Yeah. You've shared a lot of amazing things today, and I just want to say again, thank you so much for talking to us because. I mean, you just said it beautifully a moment ago. Like the stories have to come out. It's really special to sit down with somebody who has been through some, something so extraordinary, with so much like grace and patience and faith and like, I don't know. Just you have you have like a really incredible story, and I feel really lucky to hear it. My my question is,、uh, what is it like to talk about it? Is it hard? Is it helpful? What does it feel like when you explain to people what you've been through? Yeah,、um, I mean, I, I guess I kind of the mentality of.、Um, I mean, like I used to have, I used to didn't didn't like to talk about my story. You know, if people if people ask like where I'm from, I just tell them I'm from South Korea. You know, because I, I was like, when I got here, like I didn't really like to talk about my story because in a way that kind of like brought the fear of my you know like past. You know, and、uh, I did really didn't like talk about it. But, like, like I talked to like my counselor, you know. I um I had a PTS, you know, so I used to talk to her, you know, and then post traumatic well, stress, yeah, PTSD. You're saying, yeah. P- so they take a D because it's not a disorder. It's、okay. something that you just have the yeah have the event yeah. So、okay. like, yeah. So um, so by talking to her, I realized like. You know, I have this fear. I'm gonna live with this fear for a while. You know, I can't get rid of it because this is something that I've been through, and it's feeling. You know, and like the way, like the harder I try to imprison my feeling, the harder it bounces back. You know, so why don't I use my story to? You know, inspire someone, and why don't I tell my story to raise awareness? You know, why don't I tell my story to other people so that people can know, like what North Korean people went through and who's going through right now? Because my story is not unique. You know, there's a lot of people have the same story, right? And and because of like that kind of mentality, I feel accomplished. You know, like every time I talk about my, talk about my story. I don't talk about I don't talk about my story to like to like like I don't want you to feel sorry for me, you know. I want you to know, I want you to learn something about it, you know. <laughs> and I don't want you to be I, I I don't tell my story to you know like oh Charles you know I feel really sad for you you know I feel really bad for you I don't want that you know like as long as you learn something today you know I'll be appreciated. You know, and like, cause like, you know, if you can use my story, you know, to you, cause like I've I was just fifteen, you know, I didn't know, but I've did it, you know, and ins- to inspiring inspiring someone, like, 
look, I did it. You know, even that situation, you know, you have, you're now in a better, much, much more better situation. You know, can, you can do, you can do it too. You know, I want to motivate someone, you know, I want to inspire someone and I want to educate someone, you know, so I feel very, very accomplished. Yeah, it, give, it like gives telling you, my story. Telling your story, it yeah. gives it meaning, right? Yeah, it For gives you. a meaning, yeah, yeah, a lot meaning, yeah, a lot of meanings. Just in case you thought we were joking about him loving Will Smith, are you comfortable sharing your Instagram handle? You might get some new followers. Oh yeah, yeah, I would love to. It's uh, it's called Fresh Prince of Pyongyang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please do. Uh, so I'm trying to raise awareness, right? So I just want to show people that North Korean people are normal. You know, just weird as all of you. You know, and just normal as all of you. You know, so um. Yeah, that's why I am, you know, trying to have some followers, you know, and I'm kind, I'm trying to like put on a show like daily life of North Korean, you know, and like we keep trying to do that right now. But um, yeah, so that's my goal, you know, to educate people that are North Korean people are normal. Fresh Prince of Pyongyang. Yeah. Best Instagram handle ever. Yeah, absolutely the best. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing all this with us, man. No problem. You've got stories for days. Even in the car, you're talking about how you got stabbed in the butt. Oh, There's yeah. All kinds of stuff. We didn't, we didn't how did get we to not that get to that? One. Yeah. So, Bonus um, story. Bonus yeah. story. Charles gets Bonus. stabbed in the butt. <laughs> Maybe next time? Maybe now? You want what to are just, we doing? Just drop it now. Yeah, let me just drop it now. So uh, I was. So. Yeah, that's after. I get released from the from the labor camp. Right. right. So and then, so there's street crime in North Korea. Yeah, lots of there's a lot of street crimes, right? And like there's a lot of bully kids, you know, there's a lot of like ducks, you know, there's a lot of gangsters, you know, bullies trying to and gangsters. Yeah, bullies and gangsters like trying to trying to take your things away. And then one time, like we we're fighting in our group, right? Because like I wanna defend my spot. You know, I want to defend, like, my spot for, like, begging food, be like, sleeping, you know, like, I want to defend my spot. But there is, like, other groups who came in and trying to kick us out, right? So we had, like, huge fight. And they're, like, I don't know, because like, we are fighting in, like, groups, right? And I don't know who I'm hitting, but I'm just hitting somebody. Like, ah, you know? And then I feel something really, really stink in my butt. So I looked at it. And small knife, like a pencil cutting knife, right? It's stuck in my butt. <laughs> like, what the heck? Stab in the ass. Yeah, stab in the ass. Wow. It just does not end with this guy. It's This guy has so many. <laughs> and it's just one thing oh, after yeah. the other. It's one yeah. thing after the other. And Jeez. like, it was so deep, you know? It was really, the one is really like short. Guess you're lucky it was only a one inch blade. No, 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 no. So it's, the cut is like this white, right? Yeah. But it went in really deep. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like sometimes like, I have like uh like sometimes like I think it kind of like touched my bone or something. Mm. I don't know what happened, but like sometimes I like I feel like the stink. You, know? you can still the feel sting. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. So whenever I walk, try to walk, it kind of shoots right through like, my legs. Oh man! Oh man! I don't know what happened. But, yeah, well, I hope it's fine. But oh, I think, Charles. Yeah. I'm so happy you're in America. No yeah. worries, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can now tell some people that yo, know, I met a guy from North Korea who stabbed in the butt. Stabbed you know? in the ass. Yeah, right. Stabbed in the ass. Well, what I thought was really interesting was, what, and when we were in the car, there were all kinds of little details that you don't get from other people either. Of course, when we're in North Korea, let alone even from other defectors, because. He was on the street for so long. You were on the street for so long seeing street crime, drug yeah. dealing, yeah. Uh, prostitution. Yeah. And, and I think somebody who's like a government official that flies to China and then says, I'm not going back home. They don't necessarily know any of this stuff because they don't see it. They're right, in an office right, somewhere. Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not about the drug dealings. But I've well, we were talking about meth in the car. Oh yeah, meth in the car. Oh, well, if you count meth, then yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's there's a lot of methamphetamine. In yeah, in North Korea, like yeah. especially like you know people like with money. You know, North Korea makes like the meth. You know, in Hamong, it's like the factory is there, right? So a lot of people does that, like meth. You know, and just recreationally for fun, they do it for fun, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, some people, like, they just off for, like, three days, you know. And I've also met a lot of people who's done meth, right, in a, in a Thailand when I was in the refugee camp because I, I met a lot of North Korean refugees, and, like, they're just talking about it. It's just, like, mind-blowing, you know. It's like, what, what? Like, some people laugh all the time, you know. Some people just cling, but I'm not promoting the drug, you know. I'm not doing anything, but and it's just, like, like, telling, you know. 
Yeah. So there's a lot of meth, a lot of prostitution, and a lot of butt stabbing. <laughs> a lot of butt stabbing. <laughs> the yeah. side of North Korea, we just yeah, the side of the right. very lower, you know, like very like, because you know you can't if you have money you can bribe out of your way. You know, there's a lot of like, because like police officers they don't even care. You mm-hmm. know, because they don't even get paid enough. You know, so like whenever they see the crime, yes. You know, a chance to get some. Yeah, money. it's an opportunity money, right? for them. Yeah. So even like even the prostitution, it's like, it's like when where I'm came from, like where I'm from. I'm not talking about whole North Korea, but like some like major cities, the prostitution is like really big. You know, like with girls with like a flowers. You know, when I was like younger, you know, when I was, uh, in the back in the days when I was living on a street, you know, I've seen a lot of <laughs> the ladies with like a flowers. You know, that means like they're prostitutes. You know. And it's really sad to see that, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you have to find a way to survive. That's right. Like I promised, leaving us on a high note. But, Charles, <laughs> seriously, thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure yeah, was getting cool. coffee in and out and some serious North Korea stories. You have been through the ringer. You're 24, but at least you got a bright future here in the States. Yeah, yeah. If you, if I work hard and smart, you know, That's right. I can achieve my dreams. You know uh, it. Thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me here, and uh, it was my pleasure talking about my life story. And you know, I feel feel lucky, you know, to be here to share my story too. You know, because there's a lot of other people that didn't make it here. Didn't make it out. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. No problem. Hope you all enjoyed that. You can find a lot more in the Jordan Harbinger Show podcast feed. That's in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Now click here for an episode with Steve Elkins. This guy discovered a lost city in the jungle while filming a movie. And click here for an interview with Tim Ballard. This is a guy who does a lot of door kicking, trying to stop child trafficking. It's really incredible. And of course, click here to subscribe to the channel.